Hello. Welcome back. Hello, Mover. Hey. It's Shanghai. the Mover Donkey Show and <laughs> featuring Shanghai, who's joining us. Thank you for coming back. It's been hey, two years. Hey, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. It's, it's, yeah. been, it's been over two years. Yeah, it's crazy. Two years since we talked and uh, tried to get you on a, lot, a while back. Just want to make sure. Are you okay? I'm doing good. Okay, because we had we had some technical issues last time with some laptops and stuff, so we got you we got you back and everything's good. The new background is better. No, it's just, well, I just moved the desk over, but you know, <laughs> I know, it's, it's, I still, like, still trying to load up the, the picture behind it, but I don't know. Never. Sorry. Awesome. Tomorrow, well, Doug, tomorrow. you there? I am here. Awesome, man. Doug is Doug is there. So uh, we are back. You guys saw me last night, so people are already sick of me, but Gonky. You've been off the grid for two weeks now in space, <laughs> and now quite the adventure. you've returned to fill us with your knowledge and life. Uh, I was yeah. digging. So, I was digging that background you had, though, Donkey. It looked like you were in. It looked like you were in like a stadium, you know, that, that <laughs> where where they were they were just done sweeping up, and you're like the last guy on the mic out there. I, yeah, I, I, bar I borrowed that place. I can't afford stuff like that, Shanghai. It's, it's cool. I liked it. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Well. <clears throat> As always, uh, the views are our own, especially for whatever we're about to talk about, because it's going to get uh, wild. And just a reminder, uh, just if you want questions, it's got to be a super chat, because otherwise we just won't get to it because of, we're dual streaming, right? We are dual streaming. So uh, otherwise, we do the mailbags uh, to try to answer everybody's question. Is dual uh, streaming so, like dual hydraulics? Is that dual we are? Dual yeah. And, and Shanghai. <laughs> On that note, while we're while we're talking about it, tell us about your new podcast, man. You're about to, yeah. to venture off into the world of us. Yeah, you'd think you'd think I'm not based on my technology limitations. Oh, we, well, look at Gonky. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, uh, evolved. You know, as I said to Gonky, this is the uh, this is the workups for tomorrow night. But yeah, tomorrow night, um, we're going to just go ahead and, and launch the fleet. So it's uh, it's Warthog Wednesdays, uh, nice. and it will Warthog Wednesdays. Yeah, it will be at um, and it, see if you can figure this one out. It'll be at um, 8 10 central daylight time 8 10 8 8 10 8 10 yeah cool that's, that's uh, uh, and, 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 and we're launching it and we're launching it on on we're launching it on 10 11 and so my combat squadron was a 5 11th fighter squadron and it was a 10th fighter wing tactical fighter wing so so 10 11 it's got it's got to be good omen right and i'm trying to get i'm trying to get my boss uh my squadron commander from that time um Michael Connor on uh, on the program tomorrow, but um, but it's going to be fun. So Warthog Wednesdays is going to be every Wednesday at eight ten. Uh, it's on a YouTube channel that is um, you can just find it by uh, my name Shanghai or Two Bags Full. Two as T W Two Bags Full, which is the um, also coincidentally the uh, title of my forthcoming book, which is <laughs> which we were talking about two you years ago. Oh, too? Shanghai, yeah. you're an author. Well, uh, I've been working on it for thirty two years, so we'll see. Wow, <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah. 
So two bags full is a uh, will be a a, a first hand in the cockpit account of um, flying combat in the mighty A10 Warthog in Operation Desert yeah. Storm. So there's been a couple other books out that have that have uh, talked about that subject, but but uh, not one like this. This one's going to be you know kind of like nerding out on uh, switchology and and just you know what I was thinking about and what we're doing and hitting tankers and fighting the weather and and uh, all that kind of good stuff. So it's going to be uh, it's it's coming along well. Um, I, somebody gave me good advice. I'm not going to give any names, but his initials remover. And it was just finish the first draft, man. Even if it's a shitty first draft, you got a first draft. <laughs> it's easier Let's to edit it. than it is to create. So, yeah. I'm, uh, yeah, so uh, I'm well into that. And other good news, thanks to Uncle Sam, it looks like a um, uh, VA uh, disability. Uh, because, you know, we're going to talk about mental health here in a bit. But uh, if we're going to talk about that on my show, too. It's going to be called... Uh, momentarily mental is what we're going with uh-huh. <laughs> my, uh, my little segment there, but, but it's, uh, it's actually going to be a, a fairly uh, significant theme of the show is, um, you know, veterans, veterans in crisis, as, as I mentioned two years ago, I've been, I was working at that time uh, more than full time, like a hundred hours a week, no shit oh, yeah. um, as, uh, as uh, working with the homeless veterans here in Oklahoma city. And I continue to do that on, on more of a volunteer basis. Now it's actually only a volunteer basis, but uh, the point is that, um, you know, that's a significant issue. We're going to, we're going to talk about that. So the cool war A-10 stuff, cool aviation stuff. Um, and then um, also, uh, you know, uh, what's going on with veterans and how we can help them. And of course, uh, shamelessly promote the book when it comes up. But my <laughs> yeah. point is that, that it looks like um, due to the PACT Act and something called Gulf War Syndrome, which is a real thing. We'll, we'll talk about that on my channel as well. Um, the old Shanghai is going to get about 17 months of back pay <laughs> and a hundred percent. So, mm. um, that's a that's a big check, and so um, that check is going to allow me to self-publish the book. So hell yeah, there you nice, go. Man. Well, we got to get you back on to promote the book you bet. when that yeah. time comes. Well, yep, and and uh, and yeah, and, and we'll set a deadline that way. I'll probably get it done. So it's just yeah. you know, uh, as you know, as you know, you got to you got to kind of plow through it. But you get those bursts of creativity, and uh, you know, you get all these ideas, and then you just want to get them get them down on yeah on the on the laptop. So um, but um, yeah, so so now I've got the I've got the freedom time wise to do that um, a little more in a little more earnest and um, yeah and so uh, yeah there there we go so that, of course that transitions you know um, from from where I was doing no no kidding a hundred hours a week nonstop in three years I took two days off and that was to attend my son's wedding um, literally that I mean I'm not I'm not exaggerating that it's it's good work as I said last time it's a it's a grind it's a worthy grind but. Um, you know, a little over th- almost three and a half years of being the resident manager of a facility with 20 uh, male veterans who were previously homeless is, wow. uh, you know, on a shoe- shoestring nonprofit budget. And especially now with inflation, the way it's been is um, it was yeah. a uh, is all is all you want. And, and you can actually burn out. And I, I know we're going to talk about when to leave later in this, in this part of that story, too. But yeah. So anyway, thanks for the thanks for letting me make the plug uh, on oh, the yeah. thing. So tomorrow, tomorrow night, um, uh, 8, 10. Uh, on your YouTube, uh, two bigs Eastern full. time, eight ten Eastern, seven eight, ten, ten Central, eight ten Central. Oh, okay, yeah. all right. Yeah, because Nine, because ten, the world eight. the world the world revolves around you know somewhere Oklahoma Central, Oklahoma, Central. Oklahoma, <laughs> Texas. Yeah. Between, between yeah. Oklahoma and Texas, it's shifted <laughs> to the pendulum swung to Oklahoma when we beat them in football this last weekend. I bet Oklahoma, saying I don't believe you, but we're, we're called the we're called the, <laughs> the we're called the buckle of the Bible Belt, and that would be the uh, will be the I don't know what would be the for the um, the spinner of the gun on the A-10. So center of the there world. you go. <laughs> well, uh, I'm going to plug a book too, because uh, absolute vengeance <laughs> is only 99 cents for this month. So uh, got a I book like bub deal. I'll tell you about right. book bub when you finally get published. Cause it All usually right. works out, except I would be an Amazon bestseller today, except Amazon didn't update the ranking. So it looks like I didn't sell anything. Awesome. How about this guy gonky with the, with the, with the children's books? It's the awesome. children's book. <laughs> That's yeah. so cool. Great idea, he's, man. And, uh, super well, awesome. I have a kid. And I'm he's like, the author and a client. Well, it's right? like, yeah. I look at these books. I'm like, I can do better than this. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's, you know what? That's a build the better mousetrap. The Ameri- that's what American dream, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's cool, man. I know. I think it's awesome. Thanks, and um, I'm sure it's getting lots of traction and, uh, and especially the Marine F-35 pods because you get to crayon out. And- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How to find my more jet. One color. Where did my jet just it's go? Like, that'll be your next book. <laughs> <laughs> see my, see my, see my F-35. <laughs> How to find my airplane when it goes. Yeah, look, did you did you love that? Did you love that uh, that uh, nine one one call? Those no, no, I ejected. I ejected. <laughs> did, yeah. did, did not eject me. I ejected. Yeah, I did. The knife hand. How far did he you know fall? Was... How far did he fall? Oh, all the way. Yeah, two about two thousand feet. Two thousand yeah. feet. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, oh geez. Uh, we already have a uh, from the audience that, uh, which is a good segue, is Gonky the ghost of Tel Aviv <laughs> now? Um, oh, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Sean. But that is a good thanks, segue man. to what we're going to talk about. We're going to try to keep this as friendly as as possible. I know it's a it's a hot topic, but um, you know, the first thing, anytime anything like this comes up, regardless of anything, you always feel for the civilians. You feel for anybody, non-combatants, stuff like that, because they always get caught in the middle, no matter what kind of uh, conflict it is. But what happened this weekend was horrific. Um, it's something that is probably going to kick off another long-lasting conflict that we're going to see for, for quite some time. And the Israeli Air Force, which is really what we're going to talk about, has started doing strikes uh, in Gaza. And also uh, the United States has put a carrier strike group out uh, out there and with the basic, Hey, if you guys, you know, this is the, this is the warning, you know, not to make this a regional conflict. And then they're even talking about maybe another carrier strike group. So, uh, Shanghai, I want to turn this over to you. Cause you know, this very similar to kind of what you saw in the nineties when war kicks off. I mean, how does, what goes through your mind when something like this happens and you know, Hey, you know, things are about to get worse and, and bad. Well, a couple of things. One thing is this is this is this is eerily similar in, in some respects and very different in others. You know, and I think uh, maybe I was thinking about this earlier today that you know when you look at um, you look at at uh, at uh, Russia invading Ukraine, they basked on the border. You know, there was there was a lot of saber rattling going on. But when they did it, they just did it and they did it fast, right? And yeah. and 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 did you know you could say well we saw that coming, but. But but they didn't see it coming the way it came. And but also it was very different because you had, you know, you had relatively rural areas across that border and then, yeah. you know, various, various, you know, small or medium sized cities on a push, which they thought would be quick to the capital city. Very different in Israel, where where, uh, first of all, you know, that's been a contested border for thousands of years. Right. Uh, yeah. In fact, just ironically, ironically, just a couple of weeks ago was um, I was uh, burned out from writing and. And uh, and switched over to the YouTube movies and uh, and I watched um, I watched uh, the the uh, the uh, the movie um, oh, what's I can't remember the name but it. oh, it's an old time movie about uh, it's uh, about um, Israel and the Israelis being um, the yeah, I'll think of it in a minute but they're um, it's, a, it's a famous book too Leon Leon uh, uh, Uris um, Exodus. Exodus, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, knew you right was gonna, I knew it. I, this <laughs> is you, why he's the producer. Thank yes. you. Yep. I, thought, I, thought, I, thought was a, I thought I thought it was God. Thank you, God. <laughs> God it was the second book in the Bible. I was I had to go through Genesis all through my mind before I got to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so in the beginning. So anyway, um, yeah, but, but you know, it's, it's interesting because you know that same fight going on and the same thing where <clears> where you know the Palestinians and the Israelis and so uh oh, uh oh, it's not cocky. Uh oh, uh -oh. Not cocky cocky. This time. yeah. Nope. Well, we'll transition while we wait for him to come back. Uh, well, it's he, like, he saw it happen. I don't, I don't, I don't know, but um, well, I mean, like know, Shanghai is saying, man, that that region. So I grew up there, and all throughout the eighties, nineties, that region, it's is very sad, man. It's just been war torn, right? You had the Palestinians and the Israelis, and then yeah, you, you know, I mean, you had the Iran Iraq war. There's always been a lot of conflict over there, and it's just. I don't know. I mean, it, oh, so my question is the Israeli intelligence apparatus, one of the most, I mean, the most yeah. advanced in, in the yeah. world. They have, you know, everything along the border. They watch, I mean, they're all, they're constant. They give us intel, right? I mean, the, <laughs> is, the Israelis are, are just number one when it comes to this. How did they miss it? You know, I mean, because, <clears throat> because it's not that they didn't say that. I mean, Hamas was in, I right. think uh, in Lebanon, like planning this, they knew that the six billion dollars freed up some money to go do some other stuff. Like there were a lot of signs leading up to this, and it just it seems like they got caught flat footed. Well, for it, sure, you're going to have some to say that they knew about it and they just let it happen for whatever reason. The and nine was probably conspiracy. yeah, yeah. Then there's probably I mean, dude, you know, uh, I mean, you know how you know how it is if. If you've had an extended period of peace where there hasn't been a whole lot going on, you start seeing these signs and it's like, ah, it's, it's nothing. It's nothing. Yeah, no, that that's a good point. But what to Shanghai's point about comparing it to the Ukraine invasion? Well, one, Crimea had already happened 
what, you know, almost 10 years earlier, you know, that, so there were already land grabs before that. This was not a conventional thing. They were on, you see the paragliders, you know, the, the little go-karts with the fans and the parachutes. I mean, they were airborne. They were using drones, which where has the prol proliferation of drones started? The Ukraine. We didn't talk about, you know, FPV drones, first person view drones before that conflict. So there there's lessons learned from that. And they were using it to take out watchtowers, to take out sensors, to put um, troops across the fence lines. And then what did they do? They massacred 250 people or 260 people at a peace and love concert. You know, just total warfare. I mean, surprise. Yeah. I mean, I, honestly, that's probably symbolic in itself. You know, that was definitely a planned target. Yeah. You know? Well, it is their whole, the holidays. It's the end of the holidays where they're not talking to anybody. They're, they're they shut off from social. They kind of do the gonky thing where they, they go away for two weeks and they don't talk to anybody. And, and that's part of, you know, their religious practices in there. So they're, they're obviously taking advantage of that. Um, the response has been, you know, the, the coin counterinsurgency ops. I mean, this is exactly what we've seen for the last 20 years in Afghanistan and more, more Iraq than Afghanistan because the urban fighting, you know, you're bombing city blocks and stuff. I mean, you did a lot of Afghanistan stuff. There wasn't much like you're talking mountains and villages and stuff like that. Iraq was, we were flying over Balad, you know, in our, uh, uh, Baghdad and, you know, you're, you're bombing city blocks, not just, you know, whatever's there, but, uh, see Shanghai, he's back with an A-10. Yeah. That's it. You know, that, that was, it, yeah, but, um, it just shut down. I think, I guess we can't talk about history a lot. Did you just get yeah, real just, time kind of what happened, you know, <laughs> I literally, the little, the thing just said, it said locked. The, the computer said locked. And it just booted, uh -oh. it just it just wound down. Then I had to boot back up. So I don't know. That's what way. happened to me uh, two weeks ago. It's exactly what I thought when that happened. I was like, oh, this is weird. But you guys have these F thirty five computers. Uh -huh. My thought, uh -huh. thought is that is that they went in. They went in. Hamas went in very very fast. They went in um, on a on a on a you know on the the Sabbath, and it was a holiday as well, religious holiday. So in in, in the Sabbath. So so um, and just with all those rockets. Just um, with impunity, without regard to where those rockets were going to land. I mean, those are just terror weapons, obviously. And then rolling through, uh, you know, the the the, uh, the southern border there, and just 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 slaughtering people. I mean, just yeah. you know, people in their homes. You know, those little those little kibbutzes will have a a kibbutz. Uh, they call them kibbutz security, kibbutz guard, and they're they're generally former military people. It's kind of like your neighborhood watch with you know automatic weapons. But um, but there's relatively few of them, and they were just you know mowed mowed down. There was no no defense there, and and so did, you know obviously they caught Israel sort of with their pants down a little bit. They're sleeping, caught them asleep. But it seems to have taken. I'll make this one comment. You know I don't I'm not, I'm not criticizing anyone or or um, I will take sides. <laughs> there's no doubt about that. Uh, but um, it's where where was where's Israel's army for the first couple of days? Essentially, you know, really, I mean. Well, they were they'd doing. Be, they'd be ready to roll quick, right down the road to the south. Yeah, it seems. I mean, they did a, a, a pretty advanced mobilization. I think three hundred thousand reservists were put into service within forty-eight hours of all this happening. I mean, I, I think they yeah, had no, repelled yeah, for, most for of sure. the invading force. But within, but you think? Yeah. You think they have like like an alert, right? Shanghai. Yeah, well, we talking about within, some yeah, sort of alert or so, but. Well, that's what that's what I'm saying. I mean, yeah, obviously they've got the air force, you know, on alert. They're you know only a couple minutes from the border, but but um, we're not going to see or hear much of their air force, obviously, because they, we never do. They're very secretive. But but um, I did see a couple of big big LGBs coming down to a building a couple couple yesterday. But um, uh, but the um, yeah, you know, you'd think they would have 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 you know mechanized armor on alert, just like we do fighters on alert. For that border and of course they've got their iron dome and it, it's been somewhat effective it's not that effective in things like rockets but um but it's a you know it's a unprecedented kind of you know uh, escalation of what's been going on for 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 a long long yeah. time and um uh you know it's just to get all my comments out the other thing i'll say is i'm a little suspicious of six billion dollars being sent to iran recently um <laughs> 
Yeah, no, no kidding. Uh, you know, it's no secret who who funds uh, terrorist organizations like Hamas. Um, yeah. And, uh, obviously, this is something they've been planning for a while, and they had to stockpile a lot of weapons. But, um, but you know, grabbing of hostages, civilian hostages. I understand taking military personnel as prisoners of war, but um, taking civilians. Uh, babies, you know, children, not not the whole family, you know, snatching kids and and taking them down uh, s- south to be hostages in tunnels where they stockpile their weapons is uh, is un- is just um, is beyond the pale, really. Yeah, and that's that's actually two points I wanted to make about the tactical picture. One being I've never heard of a what they call it a roof knock. That was the first time I'd ever heard of that. Uh, watching some of the Israeli strikes, and for those that yeah. don't know, what that means is they drop you know, some small inert ordinance on the building to let people know this thing's about to get destroyed to give the civilians time to leave. And then they knock it down. They demo it yeah. uh, with, with live ordinance. Right. And then the second part to that, the reason they're doing that is yeah. because Hamas is using mosques, hospitals, schools, tunnels. Like they are, they are putting themselves, they're using human shields, you know, which makes a tactical picture. And when you talk about the larger geopolitical scape, what they're what that allows them to do you know we we it's important to distinguish the palestinian people the civilians the non-combatants with the combatants the hamas and stuff like that because what what ends up happening right. is right. they use these right. as a political tool and they go look they're killing civilians they're just as they're worse than they're worse than anything else look at the their colonial all this stuff and what does the media now and it's, right. it's both sides gonky you were talking about this before there's so much misinformation and yeah. fog of war type stuff where it's just to get people riled up on one side or the other. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and Shanghai brought up a good point. I mean, just follow the money, right? I mean, we're, we're this stuff doesn't happen. Yeah. For, you know, like, I, I think you can make a... <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. And it, it's, you know, you can, you can stockpile a lot of weapons over a period of time like Hamas has obviously done, but to sustain that kind of a fight, and to, uh, you know, to feed your people, to, to deal with all the refugees that you created amongst your own people, because you knew what the, the response was going to be. There was no doubt about that. And so um, it's a it's a uh, it's just an an unprecedented escalation at a uh, at a very unique time in, in the world history. And uh, I mean, uh, not to wax too philosophical, but, but I'll say one thing before I just say is that, that, you know, I'll separate the, the political stuff and the, the possible conspiracy stuff from the military stuff. We're going to talk about the military stuff. Like you said, move the these Abbas uh, cats, they're not dressed like Israeli soldiers are. You know? they, they fit in, they blend in well with the, with the, with the local populace. So you, you really don't know who's whom, like similar to what we've experienced in Afghanistan and Iraq for the last 20 years yep. ourselves. But, but um, I did see a, a, a good interview. Um, I was watching um, on YouTube. There's a channel. It's a I'll make a plug for them. I guess I24, which is Israeli 24-hour news, and it's you know broadcast around the world. And so I was watching that. Um, it's obviously you know biased to some degree, but um, but I wanted to see what was you know what the Israeli reaction was and what was happening there. And so they did interview a soldier. I believe it was maybe a, the equivalent of a colonel. Um, so probably like a brigade commander. And they were they were as Gonky was saying they were you know massing their troops and. And uh, you know, about ready to uh, to uh, start some kind of a tactical plan. Um, they had recap regained some of the ground uh, that was um, you know invaded uh, along the border there. But um, but um, so and, and it was a, it was a fair and balanced reporting in that the reporter was Israeli was saying you know well 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 there's been a lot of casualties in, in Israel a lot of damage um, the, the damage that's been done. In, to you know, in those Hamas areas here south of the border, is uh, is devastating as well, and it's it's significant. And and uh, and there's there's been you know women and children, and civilians killed there too. And uh, yeah. uh, he got he got um, a little defensive, but 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 he made a good answer. He said he said we are Israeli. We have been fighting for thousands of years. Uh, we have no place else to go. This is our homeland, but we will fight with honor and with our morals intact in and i thought good answer man and um and yeah. it wasn't just the, the answer you know the the answer he learned in, in army war college it was you could see the the emotion in his face and the and the the fierceness of his conviction there and i and i uh, i believe that's true and you know you gotta also remember that israel is a country where every 
young men and women serves in the military right after high school. So, um, so yeah. they have they have the background of of um, of a country that's that's been at war. They know their history. Uh, they know how bloody it's been, how what it's cost. And they're willing to pay that price, but they're going to pay it. I think they're going to pay it um, with dignity and honor, in as much as you can in war. Uh, but you yeah. have to answer violence with violence, you know, and. And you, you and you don't answer it in kind. You answer it with impunity. And back to Gonkey's point about the Desert Storm is that, you know, what, the contrast I was making is, is these these very quick, um, uh, not not shocking, but surprise at when at when they occurred, and with the 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 the, the you know the the fierceness with which they occurred. And you contrast that to to my war, where yes, the the Iraqis invaded Kuwait quickly uh, and, and and you know overran them immediately obviously but then it, then they just sat there and there was negotiations and peace talks and you know and and such for from all, six seven months uh, of that um and that gave us time to build a coalition um to get uh, you know world worldwide approval un approval um to try all of the avenues of of averting what would occur otherwise and did occur otherwise. But when we did it, we just went, man, and it wasn't let's mosey up there and take a look. It was, we're going to send everything we got uh, all the time, 24 uh, seven. And we're not going to let up until it's done. And then we're going to go home. And, um, and, and we did it with the unprecedented use of air power, you know, the likes of which had never been seen before and will never be seen again. Um, and, 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 the, and, and also with the cooperation of the services and, and, and many countries with different viewpoints. But, but um, you think about the army acquiescing to the Air Force uh, for a significant period of time, um, you know, soften them up with air power for a little bit. It takes a boot to get a boot off the ground. But, but, um, but those 40 days and 40 nights of, of nonstop uh, bombardment in, in, a, in a very strategic way, um, then tactically carried out uh, with, uh, with tremendous efficiency uh, was um, was awe-inspiring and um, and devastating to the third largest army in the world. Um, so you've got you know, some parallels there in terms of of what kind of conflict this is. Um, it's, it's just pretty low tech right from the start, and it's gonna it's gonna just become a a, a ground slog again. It's you know these things it's gonna be a door to door, yeah. building to building, person to person. Find our find our hostages, hopefully alive, and um, and and just bring these bring Hamas to their knees. Um, there's not going to be I don't think there's going to be a negotiated um, you know uh, Palestinian settlement anymore down there. Um, yeah, that, this is going to be it's going to be, a, be a, a definitive. A slog. Uh, yeah, is, is, uh, yeah, yeah. And you just um, you just wonder like what other countries are going to be involved in this. Well, but that's why the U.S. sent a carrier group. Right. Or two, possibly, uh, you know, I mean, the idea is to keep other yeah, actors yeah. at bay and not make this a, a giant regional conflict. We do have a from the audience. Uh, the IDF alerts were scaled to the last threat, which was small groups, not 1500 fighters. Uh, plus, they moved a division to the uh, WB, I guess, West Bank. The six billion is untouched in an account that can't be accessed by Ar Iran. That is true. But it's not lacks context because what happened was the funds were unfrozen. I think it was Korea, uh, Korean bank unfrozen. It's in cutter, but it's still when you when you give them six billion dollars, you're saying, OK, you freed up six billion dollars here. You're going to get this money. You can then use it elsewhere. So, I mean, whether it's directly funding, probably not. But whether you just billion given, is pretty good, pretty good equity, pretty good credit. Yeah, they probably get yeah, pretty good. And credit. there's other. There's other payments in the last several years that have also been freed up. It's not just the one six billion dollar payment. I mean, the thing is, it's the same. It's the same thing. I just talked about the Palestinians. Iranian people are different from the Iranian government. Yeah. One is screaming death to America, and one is like, dude, what? like, yeah, don't it's, poke it's the bear. Two different things. And so when I talk about that country, I'm not saying the people. Good point. Because I think by and large, in fact, there was something a. a a soccer game or something where you know the national soccer team was was talking about celebrating and stuff and people in the stands were like we don't want that you know we don't we don't need that i think you have to separate the people from their government and especially we see this even here in the united states where you know just because 
a government is for one thing doesn't mean at the base level the people are bad or people are for whatever um so but yes when you give an organization that is funding terrorism six billion dollars that they don't have to spend somewhere else it's still going to be funding terrorism i mean y'all are staring at me did i say something stupid good point no, no, man. The hard part, <laughs> dude, the hard, I mean, like sh Shanghai and the first Gulf War, that was good. I mean, you, you were fighting an organized military, like, and you say what you want about the Iraqis, but at least they, as a military, I mean, they were organized, they had rank structure, they had some, some dignity, you know, when you're fighting like terror right. groups, they, right. it's, I mean, it's like, there's no rules with them and it makes it, you know, it just makes it that much harder. You know, yeah. that's why you have to go door to door. You know that I mean, it gets it gets super messy. Um, yeah, I've it, I've watched a lot of uh, I've watched a lot of podcasts from um, from uh, former uh, special operators, uh, SEALs and Delta and, and stuff, and um, you know some guys that have just really really distinguished themselves on the battlefields of of uh, Iraq and <clears throat> and uh, Kuwait or Afghanistan. And yeah, it, Gonky, it's a, the stories of those guys. Um, you know, doing that kind of fighting against these insurgents, a 360 degree threat, they all look alike. And, uh, and, and, oh, by the way, the 14 year old kids have guns too, you know, and they'll use them. And the, yeah. and the woman carrying the baby towards a mosque may just blow herself up, you know, so that kind of stuff is, um, it's a, so, so what I was sort of alluding to is, is, um, you know, you can roll through with armor and you can, you can bring their, their, you know, enclaves to, to rubble with, with their power as they've been doing. But um, but eventually, you've got to you've got to go door to door, and it's a uh, that is a very very long, hard, bloody uh, situation, especially uh, with the will to fight of both of those sides. You know, um, yeah. you, you, we had a situation uh, in Desert Storm where you had a lot of conscripts, and 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 you know, of course, this is part of our strategic plan is, is we want to we want to go in and we want to we want to eliminate their their ability to to wage war but also their will to wage war and um and so the the, the ability is one thing uh and, and and certainly as israel has the armament and, and and the backing of people like us to do that but but the will of uh, the palestinians the will of the israelis and the um the uh the willingness to do really heinous things of these terrorist organizations like hamas is um is a whole different uh, set of circumstances, and it seems yeah. to be the, the norm in in conflicts lately, and um, and it's it's um it's really disturbing. It's not just disturbing from someone, um, you know, from the standpoint of somebody who who was a professional at arms, but it's just disturbing as a human being. And what does it say about our our uh, our culture? Uh, the what does it say about our, our world morality? What does it say about the future of this? world um when we have conflicts like this where, where you're just indiscriminately killing everyone and and raising everything to rubble yeah. just because um it's it's well, not it's not this, and, and, this and, is and, not and, just and, because earlier is... with, with these operators yeah. these bad bad actors it's like it's also it's also it's all they don't care but, but they yeah. don't care they, they don't care about world opinion they don't care about international tribunals and 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 geneva conventions and 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 even even basic you know even basic golden rule I mean, you know um, yeah it's uh well it's it's really well, disturbing i think that's why you know Boober, the comment you made about the, it's not the the, the the people it's their it's their leaders I, I, i'm somber because it's a somber topic it's just I, i'm i'm kind yeah. of a, almost set up you know i've got a lot of emotional uh thoughts about it but then yeah yeah. Um, all right. So we got uh, Garrett says, I won't be surprised if we don't get directly involved. We have mobilized our naval forces pretty quickly and there are possible American hostages. I unfortunately don't think they, the hostages would survive, to be honest with you. I think where they're putting the hostages, if they even are, are still alive, I think that's a really low probability situation. But, you know, I, I don't know. Um, yeah, that's uh, I hope. I hope not, you know, but I, I do think this is going to be a long protracted another. We're going to have a two front situation with Ukraine, you know, where we're supporting that with arms and, and assets. 
uh, financially and, and whatnot. And then we're going to have this because I don't think this is going to end it. Cause they're, they're not, when you have such a colossal failure of the ability to protect yourself, they're going to want to make sure this never happens again, which means they're going to be, uh, on the, on the war path, which to your point, Shanghai, uh, you know, Krav Maga, right. That's a Israeli, uh, means contact combat. And one of the tenets of it is avoid, negotiate, kill, which I used in one of my books. I kind of, uh, cheated on that one, but they try to avoid, or at least the tenet is you avoid, uh, if you can run away, talk your way out of it, uh, with negotiate. So, you know, if you can't avoid altogether, then you try to, you try to negotiate. And once that's done, it's what you said, you know, it's kill. And that doesn't just mean kill the, the attacker. It means kill their ability to fight and kill their will to fight. And the problem though, is that when you've got an ideology, right. every time you kill somebody, you make five more. And that's what we had discovered in Afghanistan. That's what we discovered in Iraq. You know, you can't, you cannot force somebody into a democracy. You cannot force somebody into, a, a, you know, kumbaya. It is very hard with radicalized people. And so, uh, moving forward, cause I don't want to get anchored on this for, for too long. Um, on that note. So, you know, it, it was actually going to be a topic for the, uh, uh, -oh. it was actually going to be a topic for the, um, uh, Ukraine stuff previously, but now it makes sense. Is the A10 valid for this? Is the A10 something that you know you may yeah, think is a, a, a viable option? Of course. <laughs> I mean, absolutely. You know, now, I, mean, I mean, in terms of in terms of if they had A10s and 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 uh, A10 drivers, you bet. I mean, you know, I I I, I it's in terms of any airplane for any conflict that. You know, I, I don't think this is where you're framing the question, but you know, whether it's F-16s for Ukraine or A-10s for whomever, um, and there's going to be a lot of talk about A-10s for a lot of people now that, you know, this this year, um, this fiscal year that just got underway, they've got 42 A-10s being retired, uh, you know, C models, and um, and uh, and I think the timetable for the for the total retirement of the A-10s will be moved up, frankly, because there's a lot of talk now that now that it's kind of a kind of a um, fait accompli. Uh, the F-35 production line, you know, they're they're claiming that that um, they could crank those out faster and get those um, get those uh, in service faster without if we had if we didn't have the drain on supply chain and uh, personnel of the A-10. So I think once they decide to retire something, it's going to go faster than than we think. But so there's going to be a lot of talk about A-10s for a lot of places, um, and um, and you know I fall on the side of of uh, by the time you get any airplanes to, to some other country and get pilots trained and maintainers trained and the, the supply chain of parts and all that stuff, the conflict will be over, <laughs> uh, you know, or, yeah. or it, so, so, but, but if they had a tens, absolutely, man. I mean, you know, again, I watched, um, I guess it was, uh, it was the, the, the first morning, the first morning of the response of, of Israel. And, um, you, know, you could see the, the you know, LGBs coming down, you know, into those buildings. And, and, um, but I just think, you know, in terms of, of, um, insurgents and and terrorists and you know the guy on the on the motorcycle or the, the back of the truck with a ak you know so think about a10 it's going to go in there um, and be able to see that see that conflict developing see where the good guys are and see where the bad guys are and put down some very very lethal fire very close yeah. to, to friendly troops with very little if any collateral damage and and um, you know uh, i'm sorry you're just not going to do that from an f-16 uh, screaming in um well, they got the yeah. gun. I mean, you've got the gun is the yeah. most surgical that's weapon. Uh, well, now they've got that's laser it. rockets, but yeah, uh, but the gun absolutely. I mean, that, that's my point. Is that <laughs> that gun, those bullets are going exactly where your where your airplane's pointing, and they're getting there really fast. Uh, there, it's a huge projectile. It's not going to be affected by wind or bullet drop. It's just going to go where you're pointing at, and um, yeah, and um, you know, put seventy rounds a second down uh, in about a three meter circle. It's a, it's a it's a it's a heck of a weapon. And, uh, and 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 then be able to take a lot of punishment. Be, be able to take the guy, you know, uh, blasting away at you with an AK-47. You know, Aiton's going to laugh at him uh, for the most part. So, um, and that's the thing is that, um, you know, in these kind of conflicts, obviously they, they really would have benefited Ukraine, uh, an aircraft like that, in those early yeah. days when they were all bogged down in the mud, the miles long in convoys. Yeah, the tanks. I mean, oh, yeah, obviously it, yeah. that's what it was originally designed for, but yeah, it's it's really shined in in this. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, it's, um, you know, and, and an aside to that or whatever is, is that uh, I think we're I think America is going to be very, very uh, uh, 
sad that that they retired the A10. There's um, yeah. there's many many uses for it. Um, maybe maybe you know again half again the numbers that we have now, which is half again of what we what, what they built. Um, but um, but there's a there's a darn good use in a lot of places for a couple squadrons of hogs for sure. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I just dude, I just cannot understand why anybody can't see why we maybe we need a tens or a viable a 10 replacement right. don't tell sure. me yeah. the yeah. freaking f-35 can do that because i no. i mean I, <clears throat> another great a 10 driver pig was telling me a story once he was in afghanistan supporting troops on the ground and he, some f-16s came in to to because they were getting low on gas bombs, probably all the above. <laughs> they were doing the passing the sit rep. Yeah, we tired of being there. Right, we, we did too much. Get a too much killing yeah. day. But no, like, it, the, the F-16s were like, "Hey man, how's the weather?" He's like, "Oh, below three thousand, it's great." <laughs> the F-16s no. were like, uh, "What? Fuck? We can't, yeah. we can't go down there." And I mean, yeah. the A-10s just down there laying waste, right? So I mean, absolutely, there's there's, yeah. it's there's a, absolutely a place for a, a heavily armed and armored low slow flying tank dude you know? yeah 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 um i know we're going to talk about the frog foot later and it's the same thing and but yeah it, 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 you know it's certainly certainly you know uh, valid to say that that the airframe is reaching its its <laughs> its life its, its lifespan in fact it's, 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 it's gone past it they re wing they re they re-winged all the all the airplanes that are in service now um to extend them you know this far but um and it is expensive to to to, to stretch out the the life of an aircraft like that uh, but but there's still it's still a it's still a bargain it is a dollar tree bargain <laughs> compared to an f-35 in terms of of what it costs to maintain the thing per flying hour um and just what it costs to acquire it but but you know we're, we're just we're just down this road again of putting all of our eggs in one basket I, i'm not saying the f-35 is an awesome aircraft from what i know about it it has some unbelievable capabilities i mean it's a game changer in a lot of arenas Unless you're flying within 25 miles of lightning, for instance, or something, but, but, you know, it's but it, but my point is that's a joke a little bit, but it's not. They can't fly within 25 miles of lightning, and so uh, but it used to be 50, <laughs> but but so um, uh, yeah. but my point is there's limitations to that that GWIS technology, um, up to and including EMPs. <laughs> that's that's one you might want to consider. Shanghai, uh, that's I mean that's exactly right, right? We were talking about the. The A-10, when it was Ukraine, we were like, well, you know, wouldn't be useful because of the, we got to look at the next conflict. And the next conflict is going to be contested, denied, degraded environment with SAMs and these air-to-air -air threats. And now look where we're back. We're right back in the Middle East against right. insurgents that have no air picture, that just need surgical, urban, you know, urban combat, surgical precision strikes with a gun or supporting soft forces or whoever. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, when, and frankly, we, when you know where the SAMs are, when you know where the SAMs are, even the mobile SAMs, and with the with the effective jamming, uh, you know, uh, uh, plan, whether it's you know standalone jammers like we had EF 111s, for instance, EA 6s, and then we had an ALQ 131 jamming pod on our aircraft. So, um, you know, you, you put enough trons out there, pay an acceptable miss distance for the missile, give yourself time and altitude to see the missile coming at you. You can defeat missiles with maneuvering as well. And so, you know, is it a is it a tough environment? Is it dangerous? Are you going to make have some losses? Of course you are, but but you can do those things, um, you know, in 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 what would be considered a, a heavy uh, IADS type environment with relatively low tech aircraft. Yeah. In terms of who's going down the chute, you know, put some F thirty fives out there and some you know jam the trans whatever they do. But just make a corridor to bring a bring the bring the the bomb carriers in and put to put the stuff down the chute. They, these you know, they're talking about, you know, oh, we're just gonna we're gonna fly over at twenty five thousand feet and just drop, you know, um, these these small diameter, you know, GPS bombs on them. Well, I mean, I don't know, maybe, but but in a in a in a, <laughs> in, a, in, a in a fluid troops in contact situation, I don't think so. And ask any ground pounder, I mean, any of them that have seen any kind of action. Okay, you can have any aircraft show up for for this troops in contact situation where you're taking direct fire. Uh, you know, from across the road in that tree line. Who do you want? <laughs> I mean, there's no, there's no question. I'm about everything I got right dude. now. On, on who the hell are, you know. <laughs> we know uh, the we we'll, know we'll, we'll take what we can, we'll take what we can get. But if we got a choice in the stack, bring those hogs down here, man. Oh yeah. And yeah. The other thing is a mentality. It's not just the equipment. It's a mentality. And, and when, when I come down a little bit on the on things like the F-35, is is kind of a little bit where we went with F-16 too. It's a jack of all trades. 
thing is, uh, you know, can you do a lot of missions and do them do them effectively? Sure, but 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 you know, the A10 was designed with with uh, it was designed with a couple of this, some people say anti tank, but it's really close air support. It was really an A1 Sky Raider replacement. Um, uh, you know, the, the, air, the venerable airplane in Vietnam that would come in and do the Sandy mission and take those bullets and, and get those survivors out. Uh, it was an airplane that would come in with tons of ordnance and tons of time on station and get the job done. Uh, wasn't pretty. Um, it took some, some bullets doing it, but it got it done and got, got you back home or you know, back to the boat as well. But, but the point is that, that A-10 guys and gals really are – all about one thing, that 18 year old on the ground with the rifle, who's who's taken direct fire and needs help. And you can get there fast, you can see the situation on the ground, uh, you train to it, you know what they're thinking, you hear the you hear the, the, the urgency in their voice, you hear the rounds popping off around the, the Humvee they're hiding behind. I mean, you know, and, um, and you get in there and you go low and you get it done. Um, and that's uh, that's a very necessary tool, even more so in these urban conflicts where you have a slow slog house to house, and sometimes you encounter a pocket of resistance that you didn't plan on, and, and you need that you need that uh, you need that extinguished fast, and it's it's well beyond the pot firepower that you got you know with you in your ruck. So um, I just think we're yeah. going to find ourselves in the situation going, man. You know, it's, sure you know, three nice. fives are awesome, but we sure would be nice to have something that would get down there a little lower and take some fire and get some get something on the ground. So, I don't G- know. Gonky yeah. segue. This is your topic. <laughs> it's fashion. Well, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> right. So, like, I like to work on things. Can I do it with a crescent wrench? Mm, yeah, but I'd rather have <laughs> the exact right the 10 tool millimeter. to do it. I, it's a good the point. mythical 10 millimeter I'd socket have the 10 mil by snap on like their top of line model that like the freaking 12 point or whatever it is. It just fits right on there. Exactly. Because the crescent wrench, eh, maybe every fourth one I round it off. Right. So it doesn't, doesn't really work. So, <clears throat> I mean, the whole, I mean, I, mover and I were, you know, multi-role types. And yeah. I, I mean, I did low threat cast you know for real and it hurt my brain because my airplane is moving too fast it's just me you know i'm up at medium altitude if i was down low forget about it i'm moving too fast the ground's too much of a threat but like there's there's no um i don't understand why i i guess our leaders can't see the value of hey man have some day one airplanes your stealth airplanes go in there and knock out the heavy stuff have your day two airplanes guess what you're going to need specialized fighters like build yeah. pure fighters. And then and you talked about it, the culture, let the yeah. fighter guys become experts at the air game. Let the air to ground guys right. become experts at the, at the ground game. And then right. I, I think, I think, you know, it's like, you don't put your offense team out there when it's time for defense. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's why there's, there's, there's two we stopped, different. We stopped, we stopped going both ways of football a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a tiny little towns that do that. Not the big cities. Yeah. Your, your quarterback's not going to be out there with the lineman. Right. So, I mean, it just doesn't make sense to me, man. Why yeah. would you, you know, have a very specific design, make it the best that you can, which is what they did with the A-10 in my opinion. And then same with like yeah. the F-15 at the time. Sure. And then let the guys who are guys and gals operating it become experts at it because I got pretty good at everything, which most yeah. of the time was good enough. But, you know, I, I mean, it would have been nice to just be able to focus. And if you don't focus, if you're a professional athlete, you don't focus, you're never going to make the top. If you're a race car driver, you don't focus, you're never going to make it. I mean, yeah. that's where it's at, man. You got to focus the design and you got to focus the mindset of the, of the people who are operating those machines I, all the way yeah. down to the maintainers, man. Yeah, and you, you got to understand you... exactly. You got to understand the 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 bigger picture that goes around that too, just as the air to air guy does with with uh, you know with um, with whatever's replacing the AWACS. I don't know what you're calling it now, but but you know uh, integrating integrating themselves within within a you know an air campaign, um, and and we did that on the ground. You know, I mean, I had a unique opportunity of of actually being the first guy out of pilot training to ever get an OA ten as a first assignment. So it didn't even exist. So I got an A-10 at assignment and I was super excited about that. And then a couple weeks later, the personnel folks came around and said, said, uh, we need to, we need a couple of A-10 guys um, that are getting ready to graduate pilot training to, uh, to volunteer for the OA-10, replacing the OV-10 in the forward air control, airborne forward air controller role. Um, well, I wanted an F-16 and the quickest way to that was, was go be a forward air controller because, um, 
it's an assignment that after if you do okay if you're going to get your first choice of aircraft after it so so that's what i thought and so i said i'll go fly the oa 10 and uh and end up uh finding it was a it was a very very challenging very interesting mission they didn't even have an oa 10 uh, schoolhouse at that time so the the, the b course was the a 10 b course and i was going to bring my my top gun bullet here just because we always got to show a 10 bullet in the program but it's right here somewhere but um but the point is and then we did this little spin up for oa 10 and then there you are single seat single ship flying at red flag as a first lieutenant Holy crap, man! You know that's a that's a. And I think about it now, a tremendous responsibility, a tremendous workload, um, in a, in a single seat jet, uh, by yourself. You know, as a, as a new guy, it, but it, but it teaches you a lot. And then I went to air ground operations school, a joint school, um, uh, you know, to learn the tactical air control party system, um, the JTAC, as they call it now, and um, and then um, actually had an additional duty as a by name uh, by name aligned ground battalion air liaison officer with the light infantry unit um so so i've been on the ground with those guys in some real high speed exercises three to one light infantry school field barracks why hoorah and um <laughs> and uh and, and found out as a fish out of water i mean I'll hump a, I, I i would go out running pt with them in the mornings and i'd hump a rock over the kahukus and on, on, on oahu but but i but struggled to keep up man and uh but the point is that but i, I knew that system inside and out i knew what they're facing on the ground because i've been there with them and so whether I'm in the aircraft uh, as a forward air controller, on the ground as a battalion ALO, or later on, you know, in an A-10, um, working within that system, um, it's a, you know, again, you get to be such a specialist and not just that you've got an aircraft and a weapons loadout that can do the job, but you've got a mentality and an understanding of that little part of the war. Okay? So now, you know, I'm not, I'm not going and doing, doing, um, doing, um, Wild weaseling, you know, wild wart, wart weasel. I'm not, I'm not doing, you know, I, I did some BFM over the North Sea against 1v1 versus F-16. I waxed his ass, but it wouldn't <laughs> have happened. But the second time wouldn't have happened at all because he, because he would have said, okay, the A-10 is just going to get, gonna get in a tight turn circle. I just need to get my nose in there better, better instead of just keep going up and burner, you know. So, but, um, but, but the point is, you know, I'm not going to go out there and, and, and uh, you know, clear the, clear the enemy of, clear the skies of the enemy aircraft. But, um, but but what I do, I'm going to do it very very well, and 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 there's a need for it, not all the time, but but there is, and there will be always a need for it. Yeah, so, yeah, hundred percent, man. You don't go to the freaking uh, dentist to get your, uh, you know, you don't have a dentist set your arm. <laughs> you don't. You not don't in America. Your <laughs> you use your proctologist for your dental work. Um, you use your proctologist for everything, don't you, remember? Of course, <laughs> dude, that's the only way in. Gonky. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so to speak so, go to bed yeah. kids <laughs> yeah not uh for legal reasons anyway so gonky did you guys do phase-based training in the navy say again so like so as a multi-role guy right yeah. so we're, we're talking you know if your only job in life is is close air support or, or air to ground for us we did phase-based training which meant you know three times a year, I was really good at one thing. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, you'd start at BFM, then you do intercepts, then you go into the ACT phase, the larger force, you know, yep. defend the point, whatever. Then you'd move on to basic surface attack, and then you'd go SAT, which is uh, air to ground, like strike, self-escort strike stuff you're used to. And then at the end, you do close air support, and then you'd start all over. And unless you were working up to go to war, in which case all you did was what you were going to do at war, which was close air support, you know, non-traditional intelligence surveillance or reconnaissance, stuff like that. Yeah. So for us multi-role guys, you really, you got good at it just long enough to go do the next thing, you know? Yeah, we had that. I, I remember uh, we, a tracker, it's like, it's like a greeny board, right? And it's like, yeah. hey, make sure you log a, make sure you log yeah. a whatever for CAS. Or, you know, we, we go across the top is like, uh, Let's see. I, you know, you get one for takeoff. Oh, is it night? You know, like you just yeah. go, it was just check mark yeah. stuff. Long and we counters. would, and we would, I mean, we'd totally BS it, right? Cause we needed to. Oh, oh boy. Here we go. Pencil Gawky. whip. For, for pencil legal whip. reasons. Uh, well, we, we're we joking. We're joking, but we might have pencil whipped a few things. So this is a joke, but oh, uh, because they wanted us to do 15 pounds of stuff and gave us a five pound bag, it's like, yeah. okay, well, I, let's see. Uh, yes, I, I rolled off the 180 to land. We'll call that a roll in. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> now, I mean, now throw, now throw, now throw nukes in there, throw uh, the ECM stuff in there. And yeah. Stuff that, yeah. That, well, yeah. Stuff that F-35 is doing, man, you got a, you got a, 
got a pan and, and that's not common for all squadrons. I mean, that was my squadron where we did phase based training. I have seen squadrons, you know, 204 was probably one of them where you'd have split configured jets. You'd go out in the yeah. line and you'd yeah. see a two bag Viper with yeah. a targeting pod, one without a targeting pod, a clean Viper, you know, so you never you could be in multiple phases at one time. It was always different, but I liked it personally. I liked the way we did the phase based stuff just because it kind of got you in the mindset. Like, okay, we're at a ground now. I got to get, you know, I got to go back to the vault. I got to remember the numbers and stuff. What I didn't like was as soon as I got good at it, it was time to go do something else. Yeah. So my first skipper, he was a, he's a Tomcat guy. He's still an actual Tomcats. He's an admiral. Yeah. Super smart guy. And he told me when I first checked in my first fleet squadron, he said, you know, he's like, man, I was a Tomcat guy. I had one mission air to air. He's like, I got really good at it. It took me about a year to learn all the tactics and get good at it. And I had like two years after that to perfect it. And I was teaching guys. He's like, unfortunately, in the Hornet community, just about the time you get reasonably good at everything, you're going to roll out of here. <laughs> well, and he was he was right. I mean, you but know, Gonky, in the Navy, you throw the whole boat thing in there, too. It's a whole other phase, man. Exactly. But Gonky, it, remember just about the time you get used to it and then you roll into the next phase it's not the same as the last time no, the threats are ever evolving <laughs> yeah. the tactics are changing yes. they're calling different missiles new names now yes. you know it's like well we're now we're, we don't we don't do that one anymore we do you know the new one and it's like yep. well, who developed yep. that oh the air to air guys we yeah. just got it from them and they finally sent it to us yeah it's like wait we're not and saying in the, that and in the, F and in the f-35 their, their history has been um been you get in the jet and the touch screen's different. There's just, I don't know what that does. It's new shit. That it's an update. Software you know, update. Yeah. They're, 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 and, and so you got a, you got a fleet full of jets that have different, different software updates and, and you're getting new stuff all the time. And, and that's all great. I mean, I'm sure it gives them more capabilities, but, but um, it's a point of overload and task saturation. And there's a point where you get in combat. Combat is different than training it's i don't care whether it's red flag or however realistic you want to you want to make training combat is different it's always going to be different and um and you come back to the to the basics you keeping things fairly simple and um and 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 as gonky alluded to you got your day one stuff and your day two stuff and your your you know week three stuff and um but um but uh these things tend to come down to a more conventional um ground-based uh, slog and um, an air power could be a huge benefit when when employed right with the right right tools and and uh, it's you know it's um it's a tool we're not going to have anymore and it's a uh, it's sad yeah uh we've got some questions that was a great great discussion we've got i got to catch up on some people asking some questions from the audience uh Stu says, D. Stu says, it's radical Islam that wants to wipe Israel off the map by whatever means necessary. Thoughts? Uh, I think wiping anybody off any maps is a bad thing. And, you know, mm, it's, the, yeah. it's the radical militants that you have to wipe off. I mean, you know, I, sorry, dude. No, go ahead. That's you. Yeah. That's your. That's your... Not, I, I did a tour <clears throat> at CENTCOM 15, 17 years ago. I don't know. Old. Anyways, part of my check in brief, they had a guy come in. Because, you know, the whole time this is after I'd been over there and the whole time I'm like, you know, how can how can, you know, these how can these terrorist groups be recruiting people? And uh, they had a guy come in and uh, he <laughs> he was a heck of an actor because he went into this role of like a Taliban um, pitching to us why they're doing what they're doing and why you should join them. And it was about an hour. And, you know. I was I, like at the Did end of it, convert? I was no, but, but <laughs> dude, it was, okay. it was so funny at, at the very end. He goes, okay, I'm back. <laughs> yeah. then we were all like, Oh, what just happened? Know? Where was I? But you know, I lived in Saudi Arabia for 17 years. I went over there and I fought, you know, in Afghanistan, Iraq. And like, I thought I had a pretty good handle on, on, you know, the, those people, so to speak. But after hearing like the, the pitch that he gave, I was like, man, I'm like, I can kind of see, I can kind of see why they're able to recruit people to do such evil, terrible things to other people. I'm not making excuses, but you know, radical Look Islam at, wants to wipe Israel off the map. I, I don't yeah. know. You know, the, the Malaysians, it's a Muslim country, Islamic country over there. And they're the most peaceful 
nicest people I've ever met. But it doesn't so, take much to radicalize. I mean, look at sports teams, right? I mean, you can I, ruin somebody's day just based off yeah. something they watched on TV that had nothing yeah. to do with them because their but team they, lost. Yeah. I mean, you can people in <clears throat> mass can do some really stupid things and be convinced of some really dumb things. Plain devil's people want to belong. Or... People want to belong to a group. They want to believe in something, and and they they want to. Um, yeah. They want to immerse ourselves in it, and 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 it seems like more and more these days it's a, and they want to do that uh, with malice, <laughs> you know. And, well, and, and, that's and, not and, these days. That's thousands of years of, I yeah. mean, culturally. I'd say, yeah, I'd say you know any kind of radical religious. Yeah. I mean, there's been radical Christianity, right? There's been, Absolutely. I mean, any kind of Absolutely. radical well religion stuff is yeah. Well, so, and, and, yeah, that's that's a good point. Bring it back to. This is in the name of religion. This is the name of, of faith and, and a belief system. Um, it's, 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 you know, and, but you look at us, look at a, at a, at a relatively Christian uh, nation such as America and, uh, and, and, and our support and, and friendship um, with the, with the, uh, with the uh, Orthodox Jews. Um, and, and we could get past the difference of, of, of Christ with, with them uh, because you know what? Um, they're they're good folks, you know, <laughs> and they're just trying to trying to have a good life, and and do do the right thing and prosper, and that's what we're doing. That's what that's what that's that's what we go and that's what we go and preach. We're, we want to radical radical radicalize people with the idea that you could be free <laughs> and have your. But you know, it, it's not just religion. I mean, World War II wasn't about religion per se. It was. I mean, look at. Look at that, you know. I mean, yeah. there there are all mean, flavors I mean, this is of, really, this, of radicalized. I mean, this is, yeah, there, there's all it, kinds of ways people can be radicalized in the in the manner that is dangerous. Yeah. Uh, moving to Ben, he says, jumping ahead, future for A10 and F22, they're gone. I mean, I think they're being defunded as we speak. Let's just double down on the mistakes. Yeah, <laughs> that's just yeah. a joke. It's just a joke. Yeah. Yeah, the F twenty two is a big, big mistake. We didn't make more of those. I mean, that you know, what's that? What's that? You move around a good point. The other, the other, another podcast recently about the F sixteen. You know, keep that assembly line going, man, because once you stop it, it's stopped. And yep. um, that the F twenty two is a is a awesome, awesome game changer of an airplane. It's for an air dominance uh, fighter. Um, can the F F thirty five fight air to air? Yes, but not like the F twenty two can. And not with yeah. the weapons loaded out of Scott and, you know, just here we are. Here we go again. Uh, F-15 <laughs> EX. Here we go again. You know, right. Let's, you yeah. need the nerds with the chalkboard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't have those guys. You don't know. And then Doug says, what could possibly replace the A-10 guys? Big mistake. I think that might be rhetorical. Yeah. I don't, I don't know of anything that's super to no, I mean, maybe? I mean, well, that's going to say it's an airplane like that, but super Tucano, the, there's a few others like that, that are, that are um, even low, lower tech. And, and they, they can take the, the biggest issue there though, is, is, is taking some punishment because when you get down low like that, um, you know, you're, you're going to, you're going to, you're down in the regime of, of the small arms now. Um, yeah. And um, uh, you know, I, I, a thin skinned aluminum skin, one, one propeller airplane, is um is a little different proposition but there is there's a lot of places in the world where, though where that's a very very viable very cost effective very effective option but, yeah. yeah yeah uh zippers forever says mental health note to all uh i told my kids to stop watching videos as what has been seen can't be unseen i have enough demons from liberia ds a desert storm oef san bernardino for all of us hence rica the uh, rinka the uh, service dog. That is a great point. Uh, Twitter yeah. has been on, yeah. and and you know what? It's not. It's not just the worst of it. A lot of it is not even from this conflict. People are trying right. to. They'll take a video from something yeah. else and be like, "This yeah. happened in Israel." You know, be shocked and whatever. And not only does it is it horrific, but it desensitizes you to it. Well, you know, that's it, the point. It, that's the point right there. The, the video games, the, the stuff. You know, but my kids were coming up. It was a, you know, the. Um, Oh, this, uh, I don't remember what they call this. They could you're driving around and you know, in cars and and uh, shooting people and stuff. It's, it's I don't know what they call that game, but but um, GTA uh, Grand, Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, yeah, it's games like that. <laughs> I can play that as cops, are, You know, are, are they are they fun? Sure, they're fun for somebody who has the discernment to know that this is entertainment and it's not real. 
and and it's 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 not acceptable. Not, the language is not acceptable. The activities are not acceptable. It just has really not, not much value at all in society. But but so what we what we kind of did with our kids and and um, it was um, and they you know they turned out great. God bless. But um, but it was um, it was my wife did most of the heavy lifting there. But but um, the philosophy was teach them right from wrong, good from evil, uh, lawful, and um, uh, and put them around good people. You got to be a good model of those things. When you get it wrong, you got to fess up and, and and explain what what you do. But that means you can't go around you know speeding and breaking this law and breaking that law and doing this and, that. and it's okay to do this. It's okay to do that. It's okay to smoke weed without you know whatever. It's not. And you, so you got to you got to kind of be the example there as well. You're not always going to get it right, but then you've got to just teach them to make good choices. You know what those are. Make a good choice because you're going to be faced with lots of choices. Do I watch that? Do I not watch that? Do I go to that party? Do I not? Do I take that drink? Do I not? And then you got to say, I think. But if you if you if you mess up and make a bad choice, then fess up. You go to that party. Don't take that drink. But if you do, call us. We'll come rescue you. You're, you're not going to be in trouble. We're not going to embarrass you and browbeat you and, and you know, and um, you know, restrict you. But we're going to be disappointed. We might have a little more discussion about that. And, uh, but 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 you made a good choice out of a bad choice before it became a crime or a or a cover up. And and um, and, and because you can't hide all this stuff from kids. You say, well, I'll restrict your phone. Well, go look at somebody else's phone or some other computer or the public library or whatever. Um, they'll find what they want to find. And it, it was sure scary when these cell phones came out and you gave it to a kid. The whole world is on there. Every evil that you want, every good thing that you want, it's all on there. And it's and, and it, kids aren't, aren't ready for that. And and you've got to say there's things that, that your mind's not ready for, there's things your body's not ready for. You just got to teach them that stuff. And um, and and, and it, it's not acceptable. It's this 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 internet and this the, the social media, the way people talk to each other. It's just not acceptable. And what we need to do is stand up and say that's not acceptable. I'm not going to honor it with my view. I'm not going to comment it and make it make it a, a go viral. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna re- rebuke it right now and say that's not acceptable. That is not what our society is based on. And I'm not going to allow it in my community. Shanghai, this is this is exactly why I have Mover as my Twitter feed because I don't. <laughs> Mover, I'm so the, screen. I'm the one that's being corrupted by all of this. Mover, well, Mover's <laughs> eyes see all the junk and garbage, and then he sends me the stuff that like he'll know yeah. I'll actually look at. Uh, you know, I also know. read all the YouTube comments, which is even worse. <laughs> uh, Shanghai, yeah. you bring up a good point, man. I remember because uh, I my dad worked for Aramco, so I was in Dahran and yeah. during the yeah. first Gulf War, and I stayed there the whole time. And I remember a farts. Armed Forces Radio, Television, Radio, Service, whatever. Yeah. Like yeah. every, oh. yeah, then like every day, like they were showing some FLIR footage. They were showing like a HUD footage of like, I remember that one of the Saudi F-15 shot down some uh, Iraqis. And it was like, I remember back then they were saying it was like the first time that they were almost able to bring you the war real time to your living room. Right. Yeah. Um, but like, that's, that pales in comparison to what we have today with everything you were just talking about, yeah. you know, and it's, it, I think of that, it's been 30 years. I'm like, man, 30 years from now, it's going to be even more aggressive, which I don't know how to get more, more aggressive than it already is, but. World War II used to go to the, I guess they used to go to the movies and there'd yeah. be like a movie reel of, of what's yeah. going on in the, in the war. Yeah. It was, obviously it was, it was, uh, you know, to, to, to keep the public support up on that and, and all, but, but yeah, it's, uh, it was interesting. Um, the uh, as you say, the first Gulf War, where where it was a you know 24-hour news cycle and some real-time stuff, and you know I, I was thinking about about you know being being near Dahran, we're at King Fahd International Airport under construction just north of Dahran there, and um, and uh, so I've, I've seen those Aramco compounds and big white walls and stuff. But uh, was that? But yeah, right on. <laughs> so, but um, the thing is, um, you know, we're thinking about our wives, you know, huddled in some base house and. RF Alconberry in England, watching watching what we're watching, you know, the skies were bagged that are illuminated tonight. You know, you got to be thinking, man, they had to be they had to add a whole level of of scared to their their psyche that that they're actually seeing the AAA and the missiles and the explosions and thinking that man, our guys are flying into harm's way up there. Uh, but um, yeah, it's just, but it's, it's that kind of stuff. Um, I mean, I remember as a little kid. Uh, seeing the nightly news and seeing Vietnam, you know, seeing some, some of the, seeing some, you know, guys in the jungle and, you know, stuff at, 
you know, but um, I just remember it vaguely, you know, this scene every night, there was this G.I. Joe on TV, you know, a little bit of G.I. Joe on TV. And, but it was, you know, I was just a, I was just a small child, but, but you never but, saw uh, somebody die on TV. No. And I think no, you never that, saw, yeah, yeah. Well, no, you oh, didn't see a, you didn't see Saddam Hussein hung by his neck until dead. You didn't see somebody right. beheaded by a right. jihadist. Of, yeah, absolutely that's not. the, the gift and the curse, right? So absolutely. You had in World War II, you had what the government wanted you or allowed you to see because they were controlling everything that came out. It was combat camera, right? And and so you watched the reel and you saw what the government wanted you to see. Right. And then nightly news, 24-hour news cycle, for the most part, you saw what the government wanted you to see. Now, 2023, and we're way off topic here, but it goes to your point. What What you're getting with Twitter is everybody's a reporter which in some ways is good because now you're getting it unfiltered. You're not seeing the the narrative, the spin, all that stuff of the government. You're seeing the spin of the person, that individual, sure. which means sure. you now, as a, if you're smart, you have to look at things and go, is this legit or is this BS? And do go. I believe everything that I see or am I going to question this and go, why does that, why is that too convenient? Why, why is that? What there is the catch? And therein lies the problem is that you know and I sound like I'm on a soapbox and I guess I am a little bit up there but a lot really but but um, and there's a, there's two sides of the coin of course and and I, I do believe in the in the freedom of people to express themselves the way they want to and I believe that that there's unfiltered uh, views of things that are independent of any any government or organization or, or political action party or anything else are are very 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 helpful however comma they have to be they have to be done so in light of some discernment and some yeah. mores, some mores, you know, mores uh, that people don't know this. That is a generally accepted set of, of values and beliefs of a, of a community. You know, so it's just the way we are. I mean, uh, now there's subsets of communities and people believe different things. And I get that. But, but, but as a culture, whether you want to call it as a, as a community, local community or a state or a region of the United States or a nation, we have to have some kind of common values and and, um, and 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 maintain those as some sort of standard and when there's no discernment and there's no critical thinking which is what you're uh, alluding to mover and uh, you know had the opportunity to teach undergraduate college um, and also teach graduate uh, students in business and and, um, and and what i realized when i taught the first the first time i taught an undergraduate you know Introduction to International Business, a you know, freshman course. I realized these students don't know how to learn. They they they're not students at all. These kids don't know how to learn. They've been they learn they they know how to memorize and regurgitate, and move on. Uh, they and there's a where's the study guide? Is this what's going to be on the test? You know, Douglas. And uh, they did they did <laughs> they, they did not know how to learn how to discern things, how to determine whether something is valid, whether it's 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 undergone some sort of a a process of of critical thinking, of Bloom's taxonomy, or whatever, and and is this based on a theory? Is the theory been been backed up by some sort of research, uh, you know, that makes some some logical sense? We may not believe in the conclusion, but uh, it was a lot easier when every all the knowledge I needed was in a building on the center of campus, you know. But when it's this yeah. internet, where you and I can go onto Wikipedia right now and put in whatever bullshit we want and see where whatever we want to say we are. And nobody is vetting that whatsoever. You know, yeah. and that's why that's why in higher institutions of higher learning, Wikipedia is not allowed to be used as a source. But but uh, these these kids just don't know. Uh, and, and unfortunately, their parents don't know. We're, we're generationally beyond the, the point where where it's almost like this is this is not even almost you know within the realm of saving because. Uh, and we've got a president of the United States who can say whatever the hell he wants. It's an absolute bold-faced lie, and 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 nobody calls him on it. Or if they do, it's just it's just yesterday's news. We move on to the next salacious thing. It's um, it's just really, really a problem beyond just you know what we can see on on the internet. It's 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 what kind of discernment do we have? It's a discernment to say whether that's true or false. And discernment to just turn the damn thing off because it's just it's just not not edifying whatsoever. Um, yeah. All right. The, Let, let's we, let's catch up. We got a, a couple <laughs> more before we move on to our next topic. We're getting uh, janitor is back. Editor. Thank you. We're, he's he's Thanks, back man. every week. Uh, never will understand why the people say the A10 is ugly. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I think, I think it's, good it's ugly as hell. It's, it's all business. Ugly. It's ugly until you need it. Um, Max ugly says, but well ugly but well hung. 
<laughs> we say that? <laughs> I just did. Uh, oh, my boy. Yeah, great talk <laughs> as, us as per usual, gentlemen. 11 11, that must mean something. Uh, mm -hmm. It's lucky. Uh, ignorant question. If A10 Fate has been decided and there is no re obvious replacement, can the Apache take part of its role? I think it already does, uh, just in a different way, provided they're outside of Shorad. Hmm. I don't. We, we I mean, did join attack with Apaches and, 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 and Cobra and stuff. There are Apaches, an awesome, awesome weapon system, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Though there, there's a lot of videos out there from Israel right now where the Apaches are taken out. I mean, yeah. Hellfires and that gun can do some work too. Yeah, you don't uh, want that gun in a you don't want that gun in a troops in contact danger close because it's a it does it does vibrate a lot, but, but it's yeah, uh, but it, it's a great weapon for sure. Connor says, uh, "Uh oh, hey y'all, I've been DQ disqualified from commissioning mm -hmm. as a student naval aviator for failing only the depth perception test. Can, I can relate with Mover now. Any tips on which path to pursue first? Meps retest, alternate test, civilian exam. Uh, boy, I for the Navy, I would go." So what helped me when I failed at MEPS was I went to the squadron clinic and I, I tr tried, I practiced, you know, I mean, you, you had to go figure out if it's something you can get through. So maybe a civilian before then you go MEPS retest. Gonky, what do you think? Navy's your. Well, favorite. yeah. So back when I did it, uh, they gave you the little circle test. That's still yeah, impossible. Yeah. The five then, circles or four circles or whatever. Yeah, I couldn't yeah. pass it. So they gave me the, uh, they held up a thing, like it was a square thing with a hole in it, it had three lines and they'd shuffle like, which line's closer to you? And I passed that one. Then when I got to Vance for primary flight training, they tested my eyes again. I failed the depth perception test because they only use the circles. I'm like, no, no, give me that little three line thing. No, no, no. This no, is an Air don't... Force base, sir. Right. That's exactly. <laughs> they They're like, no, no, that's not approved in the Air Force. I'm like, well, I'm in the Navy. They're like, well, sorry. And so what they did was... <clears throat> they gave me cheaters. So they, Glasses. yeah, they gave me, so, I mean, I went from having like 2020 to having 2010 uh, and I drank tons of water, well hydrated. And I took the test again. And the lady told me, she said, just relax your eyes. She's like, yeah. we'll be here all day. Whichever ones your eyes you gotta gravitate to. Yeah, just kind of you just kind of give it a thousand yard stare and whichever one your eyes just kind of gravitate to, that's it. And I, even if I take that test right now, I'm just it's such a crapshoot. It's more of a question than an ant than you know, three. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> They're like from the right or left. I'm like, I think that's the middle. <laughs> yeah, just try 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 it again, man. Just try it again. Go to, because yeah. go to a civilian doctor and get checked up. Try it again because you just gotta yep. relax, gotta be well hydrated, gotta be well rested, and yep. just don't get too don't get too intent on it because um, if you do, I, I remember the same things like, Woo, and, and uh, psych yeah. yourself out. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Uh, well, good luck, Connor. I hope, uh, yeah. hope you figure that yeah. out. Masic, uh, thanks. Masic says, what are the yeah. main differences between an interceptor and an air superiority fighter? I, honestly, I think, I mean, semantics, uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, well, one example, the, Tom the Tomcat. The Tomcat was a was a interceptor. It went really, really fast to go intercept those bombers. It could, it could, it could do well in a in BFM, but um, but um, not like some other airplanes could, you know. So um, not like an eagle. That, yeah, where Eagles you know now, now the air air. Yeah, now like an F twenty two. I mean, it goes super cruise, and so it's as fast as a Tomcat, and faster maybe, and without burner, and um, and and obviously can do some some gymnastics in the sky that defy physics almost so um so really they're th these in this day and age your interceptor and your air spirit air dominance fighter are going to be the same thing because they go so darn fast now and yeah. still turn with with vectored thrust it's just it's a whole different ball, ball game it's not a gentleman's fight anymore man i don't know uh <laughs> maxim oh we just did this one right with the apache uh must have doubled that zipper says i was a tac p when we went from the a6e to the mm. hornet right on that oh, well, that's a big transition. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, hmm. And then Brandon says, hey, guys, I'm currently Thanks, applying Brandon. for a, yes, thank you, rated pilot slot, OTS, active duty, Air Force this month. I want fighters in NJEP, your own NATO joint jet pilot training. But people have told me I shouldn't be that guy that just wants fighters thoughts. No, 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 no. no you no. can want yeah. fighters. Yeah. Just don't yeah. tell everybody you're getting fighters. It's, it's Don't tell anybody about NJEP. 
until until just don't tell anybody OTS about Inject. Yeah. If you know about it already, like I did when I went there, I was one of a couple of guys that knew about that thing, man. And um, tell you, um, email me, man, and I'll I'll talk to you as well about Inject and OTS and all that stuff because that's the route I went. It's changed somewhat, but um, yeah, I'll get you some get you some gouge on that deal there, man. That's what, but that's what you want to do, man. You want to go to Inject and you want to be a fighter pilot. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it, it's not that you don't want to, it's just that you, you don't want to brag to people, you know, stay right. humble, credible, right. approachable, help cooperate to graduate, help your bros. Yeah. You just, that, that guy is the one that's like, well, I'm going to be a fighter pilot and I, you know, I can't wait, you know? And it's like, dude, you haven't even touched an airplane yet. Slow right. down. Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, I, I wanted fighters that, yeah. that was my mindset. Yeah. So, but, and you know, at the end of the day, and how I conducted myself around other people is like, I'm going to get what I get, but right. whatever I get, it's because I did, I did 110% of what I could do and I can be happy with that. That's a and, good and point I wanted, too. I wanted it's... fighters too. And I wanted to go to Injet because Injet was fighters or nothing. And so, <laughs> so well, now know, it's so, not, now you, you can get other stuff out of Injet. Yeah, so you, it's a you, little you bit. Can. That, that is true. But I think that's yeah. more of a issue of, um, of, uh, needs of not the washing Force. guys out and needs of the Air Force. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, think, I mean, I mean I'm, I, I'm not saying this definitively, but but I, I would suspect that 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 somebody that gets a a um, other than a tactical aircraft out of Injet either a maybe struggle a little bit in the course and and they feel like we don't need to wash this person out of flying, let's put them in a crewed aircraft, or it's just there's just not not better cockpits available, and so that's what drop, happened. To, drop. Yeah. yeah, that's what happened to Splint. He ended up in tankers, and it was just there wasn't any. It was there in that time where they just didn't have any fighter slots and he ended up flying the U2. So it worked out. It's all, it's all, it's all going to be awesome, man. Grow Whatever where you're planted. Is, yeah. It's going to be just, awesome. If you don't get fighters, just accept it and, and it'll work out. It'll work out. Yeah. Uh, Seth says, thank you, Seth. Wow, Fleet Seth. Week just passed in San Francisco. Two questions. Gonky, did you know any Navy brass band members? <laughs> no, I, I didn't. There. Sorry. Were you in the band, Gonky? Sorry, I old, am not musically tuba. talented. You got the tuba. Uh, to <laughs> everyone, what's the floor for the Blue Angels? The ground. It seems yeah. like 5,000. They uh, weren't much higher than my apartment. No, it's like if rooster tail. <laughs> yeah. Um, they weren't much higher. So I wonder if he's talking about the top yet. No, they, they do work. They work, they work down in training. Ceiling? And, and even, even during the, se the during the season, the team's... Um, tighten it up as they go through the season and they work it down lower. Well, they, but, um, they have uh, a high show and a low show too, Seth. So it depends on if, how the weather was, yeah. uh, which will dictate how low they can get, but they try to keep it and you know, they try to keep it as tight as they can. Cause that's, that's the best viewing for the crowd. Yeah. That's, uh, and Roderick says when you combine moral creators with us, immoral viewers, just kidding. We're all good. <laughs> uh, all right. Humor, thank thanks, you, man. And now we're back on track. Douglas, are you still with us? I am. We would like to talk about the Russian Airbus field takeoff. <laughs> so this yeah. is that Ural Airlines. What was it? An Airbus? Uh, it's a hotel Ural. now, man. <laughs> Airbus. I remember it's got generators and <laughs> Airbnb. I, I thought that was probably the most likely outcome, Gaki. Same. It was, it was an A321, and it made a forced landing, and they've decided to fly it out. They um, <laughs> so plan to take it off, and they're saying, I like Was it a 320 or a 321? It says 321 here. 320. Yeah, 321. No, no. That's the 2019. Okay. Oh, okay. I see what you mean. Okay. Yeah. yeah. This one's a 320, so it's gotcha. shorter. So this was a 320. Um, yeah. landed and nobody was hurt. And I love this quote here. According to preliminary technical assessments, the aircraft is <laughs> aircraft is fine. It's good. <laughs> the plane it's is not good. seriously damaged and will probably be able to carry out flights in the future. Dude, 167 people. Isn't that everybody gonky? I mean, that's pretty uh, much that's like, pretty I think we're at hundred. Yeah, that's, that's pretty all cool. the seats. No, no, you know, those well, those, they're still waiting to get out of there, man. They're, they're staying in the finest hotel in small village. in the field. <laughs> yeah. If you, you can have this takeoff, Captain. <laughs> I don't, you uh, know. Uh, Doug, are I they really, doing anything to the surface? Does it say that? It doesn't specify. They're just going to um, straight up fly it out, huh? They, they was, said they made repairs to the plane. I, I was reminded, I want to give a shout out to Captain Carlos Dardano, who probably is who they should call. He retired in April. He was the guy that flew the, the plane off the levee in New Orleans. 
Wow. They yeah. should call, they should call him. That's sea level. Was that levy What's grass? The... Was that grass? Yeah. Dude, yeah. I don't. That's the thing. I'm like, how the heck are they going to get that 320 out of out of there? I mean, I, I mean, the engine's take hang... off, dude. Pick the nose up a little <laughs> bit. Get it. Just pull the yoke all the way back. <laughs> it's a stick. You fly. Uh -oh. Goggy's just revealed himself as a fake Airbus pilot. I was talking Film about the 11. levy, man. Oh, at eleven. Oh, jeez. Uh, yeah, but see, if you did that with the Airbus, there they'd be like, uh, "Cannot, no, 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 dude, it's fly by wire. It's got, yeah, it's like, yeah. no, we're not taking off. This is grass. You're an idiot. Retard, retard. What <laughs> is the toll? Do you have to put something in the flight computer to get it to go? Right. Yoga. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what is the takeoff data on that? So just, yeah, just, so off, off the takeoff, just pull that nose wheel up, stick the tail on the ground, just keep going. Man, I don't know. Like, I, you, you know, know what? No idea. If they do it, I I hope it's filmed. I'd love to see it because that thing's well, going to throw grass everywhere. <laughs> that would be, I mean, so if it had been a 321, don't th aren't those susceptible to tail strikes on takeoff? Yeah, they're well, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, if they're lucky, it, it'd actually be better if it's a 319, but yeah. you know, 320 is at least. Could you imagine the FAA? Could you imagine the FAA approval to even consider this in America? I mean, these guys, it's oh. been about a couple of weeks and they're just going to launch this thing up. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, we're poking fun at the, at the Russians, but you know, it, I, I do feel bad for their entire, cause you know, they're just, they're just normal people trying to get from A to B and here they are getting screwed by the fact that they can't get real Airbus parts for their, uh, for their airplanes you so know? I mean, that, that kind of stinks. What was the story? The, they had the hydraulic issue and then they ran out of fuel. They, they did a go around and then ran out of, they went to one field to the other. The second field, they did another go around and that's when they ran out of fuel and put it in a, a yeah, there, there. Is whatever that, malfunction they had put him in a fuel. Like because everything's hanging. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. you're dra draggy. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Shanghai, wow. did you ever fly fatties? I have not. I mean, I've, I've flown a, a simulator for a 727 out the FAA a couple American. times, but. So we'll get to that here in a little bit. <laughs> what a guy. It was, it was You're my hero, like, Shanghai. It was like, yeah. like, turn, turn. Is this going to turn? Is this going to turn at all? Yeah. Uh, um, no, man. I just, you know, um, uh, I thought about it, but um, a lot of guys that I that got out when I did did go to the airlines, but, you know, we wanted to start a family and, and I wanted to be home. You know, I didn't want to miss half the kids' stuff, you know. So, um, yeah. It's, it's, a good, it's a good career and good pay and good benefits and all that, but it's a long, a lot of time away from home. And, and um, you know, just didn't want that for the for the fam. So I owned a couple of small aircraft and and uh, got my hand in aviation. But um, nope, not not not. I just want to be a bus driver. No, uh, dude, no, no, offense. Talk, no offense. No offense. Speaking of fighter pilots that want to do general aviation, I talked to T Bear today, and he was uh, telling me about a guy with an RV eight that built a HUD with an EGS funnel, so a gun funnel, huh. and it's based off of the nearest ADSB data of the airplane so it gives ranging it'll turn from a, the funnel <laughs> to a pepper based awesome. on ranging to the nearest adsb track and give oh. you like a gun computed and i'm like dude That's it's that awesome. and he's tr he's trying to get like an aim nine like a little ir thing to make it simulate an aim nine and i'm like there you, there you go just fights on his back Fights on his back. back. Yeah, it's back, <laughs> baby. You guys uh, see this? Uh, it's another topic for another thing, but augmented reality, that says something that's coming on, man. This you week. missed it. We talked about yeah. augmented reality with Red you, Six, where they put it in your helmet. Red Six, yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's wild stuff, isn't it? Wild Until stuff. it breaks. And then you have to eject. <laughs> <laughs> where do you, that's, well, it's, it's hands on throttle stick for the A10C. Yeah. Where, do you put the, where do you put the grease pencil, man? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Imagine how the all the screens, you know, the people touching them, you know, because that's a that's a thing in airliners, man. You look at the airline screen, oh, yeah. and you're like, why'd you touch this? Why are there fingerprints on this? This is not a touch screen. We would come back in the canopy. The canopy would be just covered in grease. <laughs> yeah. Uh, our next topic is another feat of strength for the airlines. Uh, FedEx 757 oh. had a hydraulic failure and made a gear up landing. We've got that video. Something. Let us play. It's from the fire department at Chattanooga. Uh, we'll Nobody ever does sideways video. It's always it's vertical. Ready, I don't ready people. To go. Okay. Hey, y'all get ready. It's like Gonky took this video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That'll buff out. 
He's got the truck versus out. I'm surprised they came out. Dude, they yeah. Probably Can we take a moment to look at the lights on these vehicles? I just look at those running board lights. Yep. Yeah, there you go. He did. He did clear up the runway though. <laughs> at the end there. Yeah. He, well, I think they went off like into the overrun, they, they but they everybody was safe. was safe. Donkey, nice what job. did you? Yeah. What do you? What do you guys have to say about that? Um. Good job. Did they foam? Yeah, good job. I mean, outstanding. Yeah. Wow. I was a little surprised. I didn't see like, uh, do they foam runways anymore? Is that am I? Is that something they they still do to help prevent fire? I don't know. Shanghai. Uh, the, 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 the foam. <laughs> the, oh, yeah, we we, I, we saw we, there's a T thirty eight a engine when I was down there that um, came in gear up and they did foam the runway. But that uh that foam now they've found it to be um, highly toxic and so I, oh, I think right. it gives you cancer. It saves your life, but then you have to call one eight hundred mesothelioma. It kills yeah. you slowly. <laughs> and those guys, uh, those guys did a did a shit hot job on that. Thing. Yeah, bring it yeah. Up. yeah. I, I mean, oh. being in an airliner with no ejection seat, knowing you're going to land, you're up. And heavy like those guys always are too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and everything was fine. Walk away. They get out. Just kudos to them. Pay protected. Yeah. Go home. Yeah, Chattanooga. <laughs> that's not a. That's not a. No. It's gonna be interesting to see what 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 all went wrong there because you know you you figure okay they lost hydraulics but I mean there's got to be some emergency blowdown or something I mean they obviously had leap, some, leap they obviously had some significant multiple issues that got them in a situation where they had to land gear up but multiple failures of redundant systems I think that's what I'm sure it'll about. be at their recurrent <laughs> training we need to ask but those guys, you know, and, and those guys those guys are such professionals so so experienced and so well trained that you know you just um, I mean really all yeah. our airline pods are you think about uh, you know, you put your hands, your life's in the hands of these guys and gals, and they are they are very well trained to handle emergencies and and, uh, and do so all the time. So, yeah, I uh, I sent Tank a text. I was like, "Hey, man, any crazy landings or anything lately?" He's like, "No, it wasn't me." I was like, "Okay, good." <laughs> yeah, uh, Raymond's on the seven five. I don't know if he. Really? I haven't talked to him in a while. Connor says, "On a positive note, I wouldn't have gotten this far in the process without y'all." Thank you guys Thanks, for sharing Carter. your knowledge and positivity. Just you're you welcome. got this, man. You're gonna you're gonna make this happen. You're, we're gonna we're gonna have a success story here. I believe it. Yeah. Um, Speaking of success stories, Mover, you realize you've got like more more subscribers than most channels going, right? I mean, uh, there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of big names. I won't mention them, but you know who they are. Who have less subscribers than you, and and it's because this positive message you have and the impact that you make is 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 just just awe-inspiring no, really thank you doug is going to yell at me if i say anything but thank you so <laughs> right. next right. <laughs> douglas and speaking of douglas uh our threat brief for today is the su-25 which we're going to really anchor on shanghai's knowledge douglas oh, yes sir you're up i chose a different article than the one you sent yes <gasps> yeah uh -oh. around his helmet? This one um <laughs> compares them directly and i didn't know enough about both airplanes to do that without help the uh, so, punctuation is pretty bad in this article, Douglas. Look, they don't capitalize the Sioux, the A, the Sioux. <laughs> They've got one S capitalized on this. Are you sure this is not propaganda? Could be. The um, the big differences are in the weight that the aircraft will carry. The A-10 carries a lot more than an SU-25. Um, the A-10 has more range, more altitude, but the SU-25 is faster and more maneuverable. A-10 is more heavily armored and armed. The SU-25 is more maneuverable, which they claim in some articles makes up for the armor in terms of survivability, more difficult to hit. Um, the A-10 has the gun. Yeah. What's the SU-25 have? Is it a little uh, 25? Looking for that. It has, it has, it has 23 a, a, millimeter. Four guns there actually. Go. It, it carries thirty millimeter uh, pods, and then it has uh, two internal. It has up to four guns. So uh, wow. not a not a not a not a huge. I don't remember the numbers, but not huge amounts of rounds. I mean, A10 is carrying eleven hundred and seventy rounds. Um, so, by the way, the the F thirty five carries one hundred and eighty two. I think it is. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. It's one hundred eighty two. And it pew pew. Yeah, about, it's a single about, shot. It's just twenty five millimeter. <laughs> yeah, it's like six seconds actually. Of, trigger pull on that thing but uh something like that but um anyway uh yeah you know the the frog foot is a 
is a very formidable airplane. It's it's one of those Soviet era Russian airplanes that that was uh, built really well. It's lasted a long time. Um, they, you know, um, used used significantly. But <laughs> you've seen some of the videos of these things, and I'm not talking DCS videos. Of these things flying in Ukraine. <laughs> these things yeah. flying in Ukraine. They are yeah. they are like they are like below the treetop levels, man. They are scooting along like at 25, 50 feet above the ground. It's crazy. Um, so yeah, they are faster than the A-10 for sure. Uh, more maneuverable, I'd say, is it, I mean, in terms of like um, uh, sustained turn rate, you know, certainly, but, um, but they've still got those long, long, fairly straight wings as well. Um, so they're not going to hold the turn, you know, with an F-16 or anything, but yeah, initially they're going to maybe, maybe turn, uh, sustain a turn a little bit more, but nobody's going to beat the A-10 in terms of a turning radius. It's, I think it turns around a, on a horseshoe. Yeah. Uh, but, but one time, you know, you got to be going downhill. But but um, it's a good airplane. I mean, it's a, it's a sturdy airplane, uh, dependable, easy to maintain the field. It can do landings on unimproved surfaces, all of the A-10. Um, darn good airplane, man. I mean, it really is. Uh, wow. Yeah. yeah, I mean, this is almost a weapon school there brief uh <laughs> that's awesome the uh the su-25 is a uh the free one in dcs so if you want to go play that uh donkey next time you go fly you'll be in, the, in that the biggest thing you know what i wanted to talk about is just in these low intensity conflicts you know which one will you see used more and obviously you know the a10 is going away so i think we'll still see the su-25 and, and whether they upgrade them or not do they have any glass cockpit versions at this time you guys know not that i know anything? of yeah no. um I, I know they're they're still you know they're not modernizing them like you know we were we were trying to do but uh gonky got anything on it uh no i've i've never i don't have any experience with it other than it's a purpose-built airplane like the a10 so it's going to be good at what it does yeah it's, it's not armored it's not armored like the a10 it can't take the punishment the a10 can take uh but um but um you know look at something it's a good point movie you look at something like ukraine and um they're, they're using their attack helicopters the russians are they're using their their frog frog feet <laughs> yeah what is the plural of a frog foot Frog feet? Frog, frog foot, I think is maybe frog's frog, feet? Frog, frog feet. I think it's just frog foot. You say frog foots? No, <laughs> frog feet. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> they, obviously, there's a there's a whole different name for it in Russian, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, yep. But uh, they're using them. Um, they're using them pretty pretty extensively. Um, a lot more than you know, more modern fighters, and uh, because it's an environment where you can get in, you know, go low and sneak in and, and around and and make quick attacks and against troops and and uh artillery and things like that and get get on back out of there so um yeah they're they're um but man they're flying low holy crap <laughs> but, uh, they are faster right i mean it does a faster yeah. low level aircraft yeah, than the yeah about yeah probably i mean good a good um uh 80 to 100 knots in just terms of uh you know low altitude straight level cruising speed well, yeah i mean that's good when you need to get in and get out but you know mm -hmm. does it have the loiter capability does not have the yeah. loiter capability of the A10. It doesn't have the visibility of the A10 out of the cockpit either. Um, and That's um, crazy. Yeah. You know, and in terms of a, of a uh, you know, thrust to weight, similar in terms of like, it does carry a big, a big, a big and a wide variety of, of ordnance. But um, um, so it's, a, you know, very, very capable, uh, as, you know, alternative to like an A10. Uh, and, and, it, and, you know, the Russians uh, built them in, in large numbers. They're very sturdy, pretty simple. And uh, I think it's kind of an airplane, kind of like, I mean, you know, the A-10C with the targeting stuff, it's cool and all, but um, I mean, really, uh, give me, give me a, give me the A-10A, <laughs> um, really, I mean, not just because of nostalgia, but I, not just because of nostalgia, <laughs> but back to my, back to my point of like having it, having that, you know, week, week two, week three uh, aircraft for the right, you know, mission uh, is, um, is you want basic, you want, you want easily maintained, you want a lot of cosmic systems and, um, uh, I mean, yeah. okay. I, 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 I will say I like the, the low altitude safety and targeting enhancement, the lasty that we had on the A's that they gave us the, uh, CCIP and a, in a, um, a lead computing gun site for air to air. But, um, but man, you know, my world, we're just dialing mills, man. We didn't, we, yeah, we, we, we had, had, 
We didn't, we I had didn't, didn't. Jerry on the podcast last night, and he's yeah. talking about running mills in an F-105, and I'm like, oh, my God, that's exactly, an emergency. Exactly what we did in the A-10, always. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. that's crazy. Awesome. Well, thanks for uh, the threat brief. We've got a couple chats and then uh, voice messages. Zippers Forever says, foam decreases friction, which could increase your overrun. For those of you wondering, Gonky. Thanks, Zip. Well, uh, yeah, I was thinking about fire, but yeah. We no. learn things. Wretched Rob says, can we get an update on Gonky's <laughs> Thanks, wall calendar? My wall calendar? There is one flopping behind you. The only fans R wall calendar he's got going? Or, yeah, out? well, that's the question. Is he talking about the calendar behind him, or is he talking Rob, about Gonky posing for a calendar? It's, shoot? it's uh, muscle cars. It's on a Chevelle right now. Probably 1970. Is it, is it on the right month? No. Wait. <laughs> No, <laughs> I've been gone, dude. <laughs> yeah, of course, but out in the, in the wild. Rose uh, says, first time caller, a long time listener. Love Thanks, the Rose. content, great source of motivation while going through the OTS application process for engineering officer. That's cool. Awesome. Awesome. Advice for officers coming from the civilian world. Use your experience from the civilian side, but be a sponge and learn and don't, yeah. don't think you know anything, you know, take take in yeah and then <clears throat> back that up with your civilian experience and rose ots yeah, is, is a game just it's yeah. not just get through ots to graduate yeah, yeah it's just it, a little it, it's game it's a leadership laboratory and yeah. uh <laughs> and a, pr a pressure cooker and you're gonna be you're gonna be have a lot of experience in the civilian world that that and it's gonna seem like you're going back to kindergarten a little bit but just uh you know Come on. Just, just um just <laughs> do the best you can at all the stuff they give you realize they're gonna give you more stuff then you can really accomplish in a in period of time. So it works together as a team. And then, um, then when you get that, those butter bars, they're just realizing the military world, there is a hierarchy. There's a, you know, a rank structure and, um, and you got to pay your dues a little bit. And, you know, uh, but once you become a captain, you know, major, that's where you, that's where you really, uh, where the air force really is run. So. You, you awesome. know what they call the first and last graduate of OTS? An officer, For second <laughs> lieutenant, yeah. second lieutenant. Yeah. Whether you're yeah. OT colonel or OT second uh, lieutenant, yeah. you are still second lieutenant. Go make me some popcorn. I will uh, tell you. I will tell you. I won't tell you. Being an OT colonel was was a little bit of an advantage, though. There for the last six weeks. Uh, but, just like yeah. in real life, I was an OT major that hung out uh, away from everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so I was allowed to march uh, with my flight. Or, as a, so, but yeah, I never but, made you're a right. past major as an OT yeah. or a real life person. Telling you're all, all sick lieutenants. <laughs> yeah, you're all sick lieutenants, and then you go yeah, to injet, and you and you get it, you get your jet, and you get in your first squadron. And you were the top gun of the RTU, and you're making the popcorn. That's right. Yeah, oh, yeah. you better, and you better we, do that. Well. How well you can make the popcorn is a big indicator <laughs> of what you're going to do later. It really is. It just is a oh, thing. Oh yeah. Uh, all right, so we've got some uh, voice chats. Here we go. Let's uh, make this happen. First one, I, I should have written down who wrote the who said these, so we'll just have to figure it out. Here we go. Or not. Or not. Okay, we'll skip to that one. Hey, Mover, Gunky, and Wombat. Hey, this is Greg again from SF Bay Area. Yeah, I'm a longtime listener, viewer, second-time caller. Anyway, just wanted to say hello to you guys. And, uh, hey, uh, I'm the guy that was talking about uh, Kings Point, the Merch Marine Academy. Hey, uh, one of the guys that graduated a couple of years ahead of me was actually the uh, helo pilot in that, uh, oh, uh, the perfect storm, uh, that one that oh, went wow. in the water. Uh, I don't have oh, any wow. contact information for you, That's but I picture. think you'd probably be a good guest. Anyway. No, have movie. fun, guys, and uh, really enjoyed the show, especially the engine wars. Bye bye. Oh, cool. Thanks, man. Thank you. Uh, Gonky thoughts. Oh, well, Shanghai Merchant Merchant Marine Academy. You know anything about that? Not much, but I, I do know the movie he's referring to in that, that uh, incident. But, but I, I, well, what I'll tell you is that, that um, those, those folks that go out and, and rescue, you know, sailors off ships and, and patrol our maritime waters, um, dangerous business man and they're they're uh, they're unsung heroes uh really really super qualified super super motivated super dedicated people make a lot of sacrifice so god bless them yeah all right here's another one uh air shows are boring 
Hey guys, I've been thinking about joining the military as a pilot. But when I go to air shows, I'm there thinking, cool, you're a foot away from each other, but all four of you will get blown up by a single missile. I feel like air shows display the parts of fighter aircraft that I'm not interested in. You guys said to yourself, flying fighters is easy, it's the weapon systems that's a challenge, and that's the part that interests me. Is this a bad thing? Is this saying I sh shouldn't be joining the military as a pilot? Hey guys, I've been thinking about... Oh, they got looped, sorry. Um, fellas? Well, you know, when I started my journey as fighter pilot, uh, you know, the first bit of training I had to do was jumping jacks and push-ups, which had nothing to do with being a fighter pilot. So it kind of evolves. So once you get to flight training, you don't start off, you know, uh, shooting the yeah. 120s. Yeah. Um, you, you know, you're like, okay, these are the breaks, you know, like there's a, what I'm getting at is there's a ton of boring stuff. And honestly, the air show stuff, what you see in air shows really is a, is glorified admin. I think you guys might agree with me. Just some formation flying, a little bit of timing stuff, a little bit of deconfliction, and then that's it. Um, I, you know, if being a military pilot is what you want to be, you know, go do it. There's going to be a ton of stuff. Dude, it's like the iceberg. <laughs> the yeah. tip is all you see. There's a ton of stuff yeah. below the water that you don't see. And, you know, flying air show, th those skills uh, bleed over into tactical skills. So, you know, yeah. you're going to learn all of the formation stuff pretty early on but if you don't you know you won't have what it takes to do the tactical stuff but you got to learn to you know crawl where you can walk basically that's all i got yeah. and, the, and the air show is just it's a recruiting tool it's to show the public our military up close and so it's a it's a, just an extreme demonstration of power and speed and 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 um and precision and it has nothing to do with with what the you know average fighter pilot does day in and day out it, and as donkey said we learned that to fly formation like that in T-37s. And if you didn't do it well, you weren't going to fly T-38s. Now, <laughs> we did it We did it three feet and not 18 inches or overlapping wings and all that. But but, the, but look, they, they, they practice all winter, two or three times a day. That's all they do, that one position in that formation, the same maneuvers. They get super, super good at it. And some of them have never sent an F-16 until they, they – and they don't even give them a fam ride anymore. Uh, before they hire him as a Thunderbird, for instance, it's it's you're on the team and and, and come get in the jet, you know. So, um, and they so they it, you know if they're boring to you, then then you know you won't find tactical flying boring. Um, it, it's it's just it's just night night and day difference, and and very few people who who fly anything in the military are going to be air show performer. Yeah. Um, uh oh, we lost Shanghai again. Here's what I'll say about that. I think we need to reef cage our perspective here. Whether you like or don't like something at an air show is irrelevant. What you need to be looking at right now is do I want to serve my country? Instead of the state. Uh oh. Back? You back? I can hear you. I don't okay. know what happened there. All right. So I was just saying, it, it, I think it comes down to more do you want to serve your country? And do you want to. Um, do you want to sign on that dotted line serving as a pilot or a military pilot? Because there's so many steps you've got between that air show and actually worrying about whether you like fingertip or, you know, flying, you know, cast or, or whatever mission you're going to do that we're kind of getting into the weeds about, well, like that should yeah. not be your decision. Like if, if, if any one of us had said, yes, you have to like the air show, it has to get your adrenaline pumping. And if it doesn't, you're not meant for that. We'd all be full of it too. We'd be full of it and you shouldn't listen to us. And I'm not even saying to listen to us now. I'm just saying that get your priorities in line and go, am I willing to write that blank check? There you go. Payable up to and including my life to serve and defend and uphold the constitution of the United States. Is yeah. that and defend against all enemies, foreign and domestic. It, that is your first step right now, because that is the first thing you're going to do is you're going to get a commission. You're going to swear in everything after that doesn't matter if you like air shows or not. I mean, now, is it a consideration? I mean, I'm in the jet, so I don't watch jets outside. Like when I'm on the ground watching another jet and I, I feel like I should be flying. I don't go to air shows now because I think, well, I'd rather be flying the thing. You know, it's just like going to a race. I'd rather be in the race car than sitting or watching a race car. 
I get that. But let's refocus and think about why do I want to serve my country? Yeah. And, T, and T Bear, that, 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 answer, that answer you gave, I remember T Bear saying that yeah. over, uh, and I thought, what a, that's the best answer ever. And, um, and by the way, you could be the ace of the base and a you know, shit hot weapon school instructor and end up in the mission planning cell down in Riyadh during the war. Okay. So like, <laughs> like, like a guy from my base did. And that's just, that's just, a, this is where you are in your career and the luck of the draw. And we need mission planning cell guys too. So, um, you know, you could have an injury that takes you out of flying and you're going to do some ground job. And you, you, you want to be dedicated to doing that because it's very important. The tip of the spear is very sharp. It's very small. Less than 1% of the Air Force ever goes to combat. Okay. And uh, so so all those other things, like the, the woman that's going to go to OTS be an engineering officer, critically important to what I did putting a bomb on a target in Desert Storm. Okay. Now, you can't do it without all those other things. You know, 300 Thirty some thousand people in the Air Force, and uh, and only about fourteen hundred of them are fighter pilots at any given time. They're going to combat. Okay, so so you got to put that in context too. That all those other things are extremely important to that mission. And everybody at my base, I know in the King Five, felt that they were very very much a part of the, that great victory because they were. Awesome. Let's try the stealth thing one more time. See if I got this working. And nope. Whatever he sent. This was a last minute ad. I was so proud of myself for adding it, but it doesn't work. <laughs> So, uh, anyway, Ooh, look, I got a spinny banner now. That's fun. Uh, <laughs> uh, I have the bandwidth on. to keep my thing up. Gotta take it yeah, over. that's gonna, so to speak, uh, there's stuff for that. Um, Lachlan says, any experiences from the three of you with the F-111? Boy, you, you missed a show last week if you wanted to talk about the F-111. Gonky with Cope Thunder, Mover with General Dynamics, or Shanghai with Air to Ground Domain. It's before my time, uh, guys. You got any F one eleven stuff? I I've got a lot of experience flying with the, all the Aussie F one eleven guys because when they traded their F one elevens for Super Hornets, I was an IP, and they came over to the states. Um, but I don't have any experience flying uh, with the actual airplane. I remember every single time I flew with the different crew i'd always ask them what's the fastest you've had that thing down low and they throw out something like indicated and they throw out some crazy number i can't remember but yeah that's that's, that's all i got I, I flew with a captain that had ejected from one in the pod oh you know, really yeah. he, wow. he talked about that about you know the jet keeps going yeah. crashes and the pods <laughs> gets out of the pod and he's there but okay, yeah. shanghai you got any experience with them i, I mean two two of my buddies from uh from injep went to f-111s um two, two of my best friends there and um and they loved them they um and uh flew them in desert storm even but um you know super fast airplane they could go very very low very fast it was train following radar with the stabilization system that's a that's a just rock solid I know when they first came to red flags, they were they were going so fast they were melting the strakes on the leading edge of the wings. And, okay, guys, can't go that fast. Um, but um, very survivable for for you know, for what it did. You know, it's a it's a bomber, obviously. But um, but um, El Dorado Canyon, they were very effective down there for that uh, deal in Libya. And um, um, it's a it's a great aircraft, very very advanced for its time. Um, I was at a, one quick story. I was at Zaragoza, uh, Spain, for an exercise. There were 111s there, and I was flying the A10 out of England, and um, and they took a bird strike on the the right seaters, right, I mean, right through the through the windscreen, and decapitated him. So oh. imagine, imagine this dude flying home with his buddy, you know, decapitated in the right seat. So, um, so you know, any airplane that flies low and fast like that, birds and stuff's a, a big factor. So, but um, but yeah, so that was a great aircraft for sure. And again, awesome. a part of a part of a mix of a lot of different types of aircrafts, aircraft that did their their job. You know, I take an F111 for for that deep strike, you know, over a over a lot of other aircraft in a hurry, but you know, just useful life of the thing, you know, and all. Yeah, and Garrett says, as someone who is going through the USMC aviation process, mm -hmm. could you guys get a V twenty two pilot on? V twenty two is complex, and would love to hear from a pilot POV. When people ask about getting certain people on channels, it's not because we don't want to; it's just because I don't know anybody. I don't have connections. I might be able uh, to work. Shanghai, somewhere. maybe you'll have somebody on on the old channel. Maybe so. Eventually, yeah, I'd, I'd like to. I'd like to learn about the B twenty two. It's a it's a fascinating aircraft. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. This, um, I don't know. This going to uh, replace replace everything else. But some, see. all right, you you guys ready for the mental health minute? I you are you guys are way better experts at this than I am. So today's mental health minute is when to walk away. So 
Uh, I was trying to think of a good way, way to kind of segue into this or talk about it. And, you know, mental health is important. Uh, and first off, you know, if you're suffering from any kind of issues, please talk to somebody, you know, 988 is always a good one. VA, uh, their military one source, there's always outlets, you know, don't try to try to suffer in silence, but there, there comes a point in everybody's career, whether you're in the military, in the civilian sector, airlines or whatever, where you're going to have to hang it up. You're not going to continue on this path. If, if you're a fighter pilot, you're the world's greatest fighter pilot. One day you will have a finny flight. Uh, hopefully it's a finny flight that you know about, but you know, unfortunately there are people that have finny flights and they don't know it's the last time they're going to step to that jet. But ideally you, one day you'll know whether it's your decision or somebody else's decision that it's your last time going to this airplane. And today's mental health minute is about one, knowing when that time is, if you make the choice yourself, whether it's time for you to move on for your own personal reasons, for your family, you don't like the institution, whatever it is, your mental health cannot take it anymore to be a part of this, whether it's military, civilian, whatever. At some point, you have to know when to walk away and say, I've had enough. Uh, just like running cold, you know, we have retrograde, you know, when, when the air picture is too bad and, you know, we can't fight anymore, we'll get out. We spent a lot of time in T-38s talking about, you know, if we're in a a fur ball and we lose situational awareness, we're going to get out and not make this problem worse. So whether it's tactically or strategically, it's important to know when to walk away for our own safety and for our own mental health. So we're not pushing a bad situation as tough as a fighter pilot, because as a fighter pilot, we want to keep fighting and doing and whatever to the point where we'll drain ourselves. We'll bring ourselves down because you know, we know it's bad for us, but we're going to keep fighting for this abusive relationship. So today's mental health minute is about knowing when to walk away. And more importantly, guys, how to deal with that change when you do walk away. You know, how you how do you reconcile that about, hey, I, I just said, you know what? I can't do this anymore. I'm done. And so I'll turn it over to you guys because you both told stories of doing exactly that in your military careers. Go ahead, Shane. Hi. You're, you're the guest. Oh, you go well, first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a big topic. I'll try to be brief. But, um, uh, you know, the thing is, uh, you, you just, I think the most important thing is to sort of be in tune with your with your with your mental state. And, you know, um, uh, and, and that's, that's something maybe difficult to do um, objectively for yourself. But 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 have that have that person or people in your life that you trust. Who who you have the relationship with, where they'll say, "Hey man, um, you okay? Because you you seem a little this or that, or you're not quite the, as sharp or whatever." Um, and um, I've tended not to have those people, and um, and I will admit that in the in the fighter pilot culture, uh, where you've got a bunch of Type A people who have, who have probably not failed at much if anything, and then it's super competitive at a level that's probably not very healthy, frankly, but it's necessary, I think. And um, um, and 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 you can become so focused that you just burn out and and the burnout burnouts burnouts are they can be they can be abrupt and, and ugly and you hope it doesn't end in, in a tragedy along the way as well so um uh, and and I'll, I'll just tell you for my own personal thing is that that um this happened to me when i was at the fighter weapons school which is the pinnacle of a fighter pilots you know sort of ascension along the ladder as a as a junior officer and um and um and all the things that I didn't understand, didn't seek to understand, uh, didn't know what to call them, and, and I do now, a lot of those things happen. Imposter syndrome, um, just this overwhelming um, uh, pressure, um, uncertainty about the future of the of the career path, um, just a lot of things that, you know, pressure, not, not so much pressure, but, but the the, uh, the, it was time to start a family or not, you know, and um, and so all those kinds of things, um, they all kind of came together in sort of a perfect storm of of um, I was just mentally exhausted, and um, and so um, and I and I could have pressed on, but but I felt like I was maybe becoming a little unsafe and certainly less effective than than uh, you, you need to be or I should have been there and certainly that I was built build to be there and um, and so uh, there's there's more to that story but the point is that that um, and it was very difficult and, and my finny flight was the flight 
the day before. So, you know, I did, was, this was, was what you talked about was not that uh, plan the thing and, and, you know, tear it up, but um, it was very difficult. And, 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 um, and then, you know, it became a little bit of an outcast for, for a bit there. And, uh, but, um, but uh, my, my initial commitment to the Air Force was up anyway. And so, so that the whole process of PCSing was, you know, and separating for the Air Force was n not a, not an issue, but, but, um, but, but then, then it's going to, what am I going to do next? But, um, you know, uh, you want to plan it a little, little more ahead of what I did as well, but, but you got to say, look, I'm a talented person and, um, and there's, there's another fulfilling future there for me. Um, and, you know, they see the average person in their lifetime has three different careers, not jobs, but careers. So, so, so change and, and adapting to change is, is a part of, part of any experience. But, and then I'll, I'll tell you real quickly too, when I left the, the, uh, the, the resident manager job at the Phoenix house, which, you know, was just going to be lock, help them lock it down for COVID and three years later, three and a half years later. So there, I burned out on that too. You can't work a hundred hours a week, every week and not take any time off and have no social life. Uh, work might be very important. Um, my kids were grown. I'm divorced, amicably divorced, but, 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 you know, you got to get on with life too. And, and I, and I, I, I had thrown myself into a, another thing. Um, the third thing actually turns out for me and, um, and, and, uh, and just put everything I had into it. And you can't do that. You have to have a balance between those things. And then as Mover said, the transition then away from that is, so it was a good decision to say, Hey, look, um, you know, and, and I actually back in, uh, it was May of, of 20, uh, 2022 that I said, hey, I think I need to transition away from this, you know, full time all everyday thing. It was August before I actually left. Um, and um, and so uh, uh, that, you know, it burned out more in between. But but then then I, I thought I had a plan for afterwards. And when a few things didn't work out, I became I became despondent, frankly, and, and a little bit just just be be bewildered about what to do and i went over to the va it was one night it was dark it was raining i was i was just you know there's a kind of walking around the downtown oklahoma city area and, and i was thinking you know man i'm just like i was just at a point the holidays were coming up it's just before thanksgiving and i was just thinking that man i mean you know, i should you know it's august to october i should have something better going now and i just felt like like well, maybe maybe i'm an imposter maybe I'll, maybe the greatness of the past is is is, is used up in the past and 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 it just felt like alone and, and sort of lost, frankly. And it's hard to hard to miss. But I went up to the VA to the to the ER because it's nighttime. I walked in. I just said, "Look, I'm just um I'm just a little down, and um just a little mentally uh, having trouble focusing on on what's the priority, you know, and just not even just to the bigger picture of life, but like why am I walking around downtown at you know eight o'clock at night in the rain, you know, <laughs> and uh, and so um. It's just a couple blocks of VA, and, and so you know they they're very kind and, and take your vitals and sit you down and have a doctor talk to you, and they have a mental health person come in and talk to you, and, and then um, then they're um, they're wheeling you up down through the catacombs to an elevator, take you to the eighth floor, um, uh, semi against your will, I mean, frankly, but it wasn't. I mean, it, it, it wasn't against my will, but it was just. But you know what, my will was that if this is if this is what the professionals think I need, that I need to go to the psychiatric ward of the VA hospital and which has a stigma the eighth floor and um and i had taken a lot of guys and checked them in over there from the, from the veterans house but um if that's what they think i need then i'm going to be open to that and you know what i, I stayed I, I could have signed myself out at any point but but i stayed uh four or five days longer than, than i even had to um because it was a good good place where i could rest and and get some counseling and um you know get get my priorities back straight and, and, and just sort of get, get my point of reference straight again. And, um, and I, I left there the day before Thanksgiving and enjoyed Thanksgiving with my children and, and their mother and her family and friends and things. And, and it was a good, it was a good, a good day, a good experience. And, and it was a, it was a process that helped me get on the, on the right path to, to a better mental health and, and, um, and, 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 um, you know, excitement about the future and, and a better balance in life and things. And so um, I'd say the answer to the question is walk away before you have to, before you're a danger to somebody, uh, when, you, when you still have your dignity. And if you need some help in doing that, get it, you know, and um, there's a lot of resources for, for people, whether they're military or not. Um, and, it, and the stigma about, about mental health issues is becoming less of one. Um, 
I felt like it was something that you didn't want to say. I don't understand my feelings, you know, as a fighter pilot, but, but, um, yeah, I'd say, um, it's, it's, um, it's something that, um, but, but once you do it, once you walk away, don't look back. Um, you can look back fondly at, at good memories, but, but, but don't compare, um, don't second guess, just move forward. And, and it's like, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. You know, uh, just if you take a bite today of your goals towards whatever you're, you're making progress. Yeah, absolutely. Cocky. Yeah. Shanghai. I, I mean, you guys have both said a lot. I won't say a whole lot other than, um, you know, just cause you walk away, that doesn't mean you're quitting. Right. So that doesn't mean like you've lost, right? When to walk away is that can be determined by a lot of things. So like, I remember, uh, when I was active duty contemplating to stay in or get out, you know, the, the conversation in the ready room was, <laughs> what do you do when you're like 24 and you've ach achieved your lifelong goal? <laughs> yeah. Right. We're all sitting there like, well, I guess I could go to the airlines. It's like, that sounds pretty boring. You know, it's like, well, they make a lot of money. It's like, well, yeah, but they're gone a lot. Right. So, I mean, you know, what do you do? And I, I saw a lot of guys just keep doing what they were doing, even though they were unhappy, just because they like, what else do you do? Right. So, and I, I think it's Jim Rohn that said, this is like, you're not a tree, man. If you don't like where you're at move. Right. So, um, you know, I've, you know, I quit active duty. I, I quit the Navy went to the air force. I've, I've quit a lot of things and you, you know, it's Shanghai mentioned it. It's got the timing has got to be right. And I think that's the, that's the trick is knowing when, when the timing is right. And if it's, you know, if it's flying airplanes or career or anything like that, you know, I, I, any, and I, I, I hate to keep saying this, but um, you know, I, I, I'm a Christian and I, I always try to look at where I think God wants me to go. I know that sounds crazy, but I am not a smart man. I don't have the mental capacity to figure these things out, but you know, I look for my own personal signs of where I think I need to go and I go and I don't look back and that has served me very well. Um, is it luck? You can call it that. I think it's otherwise, but, um, I do know, and you know, Shanghai talked about it. Like I'm the kind of guy, if I would have stayed, like, I think, bad things would have happened because you start to not care. And that's the worst thing that can happen. Right. So you need to know when to leave, not only for you, but for everybody else. Um, and I think it's a good thing. It's a healthy thing. And, you know, you don't realize, you don't realize where your talents, everybody has talents will take you, you know, the things you'll do. Like if I, I mean, this podcast is a great example. If I would have never left active duty Navy, I would, never have got to talk to mover known mover or actually get to talk with shanghai right uh, a famous a10 pilot right so i mean you just don't know uh you know what you don't know so don't be afraid you know don't be afraid of weighing your options and and you know uh, and making changes and and knowing when to walk away you know and then just trusting that decision but um, yeah. that's all, I, I mean, think, that's I all think I one, other, one other quick thing is, is don't let your identity be your job or, or, yep. or your spouse or your girlfriend yep. or your car or, yep. or whatever, whatever <clears throat> it is, because is that, you know, and, and I did, and, 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 you know, and I think as a group we do, um, and, and it's okay to, for it to be a significant part. And, and, and some, some things require more than others, you know, the, they require more sacrifice, they require more outside study. And, and I will tell you that military aviation uh, at, at any level, but certainly at, at a pilot, at a fighter pilot level, um, is one of those things. Um, you can't half-ass it. You can't phone it in, and you can't uh, study tomorrow for the test that's today. You know, uh, and that test, the test is the test is probably going to be in the air, um, and it and it and it and it and and the wrong answer may be your life or somebody else's life or somebody's life on the ground or whatever, um, or dinging a taxpayer's uh, property or but whatever. But but you know, but the point is that um that that that's not what life's about. And I, I agree with Gonky. I mean, whatever your faith tradition is and your belief system, uh, you know, there's room for a lot of those. But but I'll tell you one one book that you can read is Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren. It's the second best selling book in the history of the world next to the Bible. Um, and it's a 
it's a faith-based book, but it's uh, but it's not from any particular uh, denominational view. Um, it uses 35 translations of, of the Bible, and it's just an attempt to say, what are we here for? What was the purpose of us in this life, and what is it in the bigger context of eternity? Or you know, and and um, and I think if you read that, you'll find that maybe your system, your belief system will change a little bit into the fact that we're not here about flying jets or, or doing this job or that job or the Navy or the Air Force or or um, you know Israel or Hamas or whatever you know or YouTube or Twitter. We're here uh, uh, to be good people, um, to, to raise some progeny that are that are good people, to love each other, um, and um, and you know improve our our, our world do what you can with what you got with where you're at you know and um and certainly career is important and, and you know a comfortable life economically is important um but i'll tell you what um you know being being the biggest hero of, of the the war or um or uh you know having the, the longest career or you know reaching the four star rank or whatever um, those are all good things but but um, not compared to raising good kids, you know, um, who are good young people who are going to have you know good life and and keep that going. So um, there's there's just other priorities in life uh, as well, and I think a balance in all those things is important. It's hard, it's and it's um it's easy to lose that uh, when you're focused on on one one goal, even as important as it might be. So. Yeah, and I, I want to point out, uh, you know, we do have a, uh, an audience, as we've seen through some of these chats, that are aspiring to be fighter pilots that, you know, make them tell you no. I say that all the time. Don't self-eliminate. All that means is don't self-eliminate. Don't be afraid to walk away. You know, no might be the answer. You know, make them tell you no doesn't mean, you know, it, the answer won't be no. It just means that don't make yourself the obstacle that prevents you from achieving your goal go out there and take it and if the answer is no there's a whole lot of life out there other than this job you know th there are some miserable people flying fighters in the united states military oh, yeah. period that yeah. does not mean they're happy it is cool to do it is a fun fulfilling job you are serving your country all that stuff is awesome but it ain't everything. So don't be afraid, even in the early phases, to walk away and go do something that better fits you, that's more yeah. fulfilling for you, that takes better advantage of your talents. Because that's a good point, Mover. And I, I think I think my, my answer might have been a little little more more of the macabre, but 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 real quickly that 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 was kind of part of my decision too, is like I had done all the great things I was gonna do in the jet. Um as blessed to, to have that that experience. And my career path was going to be finish weapons school, go to squadron officer school, be the generals, the, our one-star wing commanders, the C and I captain, then go to the Pentagon for a three-year plum tour, and then come back to flying at some point and be a you know fast burner, be major below the zone, and, and all that. But and those that's great. It, it, was, it sounds exciting as well. But but it it, um, it it allowed me to say you know what this has been awesome. And what I'm starting to look at it as not as awesome and as a compromise and as a uh, now that's going to suck. But then maybe in the future, you know, and when, when you see, and then, then you got to be a, get a master's degree to become a, 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 a major and all this stuff that it just didn't seem to have anything to do with, with what I was primarily doing, which was at the Ph.D. for fighters pilots, you know. So um, yeah. when I started to become a little disgruntled, I guess is what I'm saying, when I started to not be so excited about it and, and just you know, it's awesome and, and we're awesome and we want to be more awesome. And when it, when it became, you know, there's a lot of hard days in there, but, but when it, when the excitement became scrutiny and the scrutiny became disgruntled a little bit. And when we started kind of, you know, when it started to be, that conversation started to be mumbling about, about the shitty new rules or whatever, instead of, instead of excited about what we're doing, then that was the time to be, you know, I think that was the time to consider walking away. You don't want to walk away when, when there's just some adversity. Oh, I busted that first check ride in pot train. I guess I better SIE because I, I'm not going to be able to make it. No. Yeah, absolutely. You know, just, just, just fight for it, you know, if you want to. If, if, there's nothing wrong with saying, man, I really wanted this. I thought I thought I wanted it so badly. I thought it was going to be this. And to me, it's not that. And so I'm going to go use my talent somewhere else. There's nothing wrong with that. Just don't do it at the first sign of adversity. It's, I think sometimes we make the quitting or the, you know, the whatever too easy, uh, but um, it is a society. But, but at the same time, 
you'll know you'll know when your when your attitude is changing from one of hope and excitement to one of fear and 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 uh, worry and uh, and dis, you know you don't want that you don't want to become disgruntled and then um, and then um, disenchanted and then then just just uh, just sour you know because it'll eat you alive. You still need grit. You know, you're going to need grit no matter exactly. what you do. You need, sure. you need that ability to, you know, pick yourself up by your bootstraps and keep going. You it's you This is a discussion of when is this not a fit? When right. when do I walk away, whether it's, you know, over time or mid-career or early in your career or whenever, at some point you're going to have to walk away. And that's that's all. Douglas, I always love hearing from the resident psychologist in our group especially when it comes to mental health what for legal, think? for legal reasons. I'm not a psychologist. <laughs> <laughs> Please, but I'm TV. I think that, um, there, there's a human tendency and a cultural tendency to, to eat what's put on your plate to, to finish what you started. I mean, there's all that, that pressure toward completion. And when you get in a situation like you guys are talking about, um, the common thread I got both from Shanghai and from Gonki is find somebody you trust to take a look at it. I mean, if that means a faith leader, if that means a professional, you need somebody to say, Hey, is this really where you need to be? Because you might not be able to see it yourself. And like Saigon said, though, at the same time, listen, listen to your gut. And if your gut is saying time to walk out, check with you, check with somebody you trust and it's okay to, to choose a new path. Sunk cost fallacy is is something people might want to look into if they want to know more about this. You know, just because you yeah. put a lot into it doesn't mean it's still good. Yeah, that's a great point. Yep, that's it awesome. for my side of the table. Awesome. Well, no, I think that's uh that covers the uh, mental health minute, and I think that covers all of the topics except for one. Uh, I don't think he's watching right now. Go to Twitter and ask Wombat tr at tr Matson about his ufo story <laughs> what he told oh yeah dude he's got a ufo story and i told him i was gonna out him and he's like no you're not gonna uh, bet because <laughs> you know how he is with ufos and stuff he saw something i'm not gonna say what i don't want to ruin the man's thunder but yeah, if he's go, been flying <laughs> at, yeah he's been flying I'm, I'm right here go follow him on the twitter and make sure you you tweet and ask T.R. Madsen about the unidentified aerial phenomena that he saw that has shaken him to his core. I didn't know. I'm going to have to call him. Oh, dude. Get up well, on that. It's, it's past his <laughs> bedtime right now. That's why I know he's not watching right now. But because uh, you know how he loves alien Twitter, like the that whole yeah. thing after we did oh, that yeah. thing. He's got so many people like personally asking <laughs> questions. So really. Uh, yeah. This has happened guess, recently. Wouldn't have thunk it yeah, last night, yesterday. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, there was some. There was there was a, there was an occurrence. That's all I'm going to say. But go check out. And uh, tomorrow night at eight eleven. Eight ten. Eight ten. Dude, come on. Yeah, yeah, eight ten. <laughs> yeah. 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 It. yeah, it just happened. Damn it happens it. to be October eleventh or ten eleven. But yeah, at eight ten eleven at eight ten. There you go. Check out Shanghai's new podcast. Um, when we figure out, I'll put a link in the description once I figure out what the channel name is. And uh, Shanghai, parting thoughts from you as our guest. Thank you for being on the show, by the Thanks, way. Thanks, man. Hey, it's so it's, great it's, to it's have really you. Great to be here again. It's two years have gone by fast, and I apologize to you and your audience for a couple of episodes ago when I uh, when I was just ready to brink of being on board and, and then... Um, had some technical issues related to a theft of some equipment. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> we made it work. Crazy. <laughs> did they get it back? Did you I recover it? I recovered uh, some of it. Um, uh, just the mic and the mic stand, which I'm not using today. But um, the uh, the super awesome HD camera and the and the uh, sound mixing boards and stuff, I did not recover. But um, oh, no. it's uh, you know it, it's a uh, yeah. So uh, but um, we know, know who know, know who the perpetrators are and all. But um, it's just uh, it's just one of those things. Um, but, um, uh, you know, just one of those setbacks there, but, um, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's really struggling to, I thought I had, had a, an alternate system going and then that, that, anyway, I just apologize. That it was a like last minute and I wasn't there, but, but, um, yeah, man, it's, it's good to, I've, I've watched you guys, you know, religiously pretty much uh, usually not live, but I'll, I'll watch them, um, 
watch them back and and uh, really enjoy the episodes. And this Thank new you. mover Gon- the mover gonky show thing is awesome. <laughs> and and uh, I mean, I'm just movers really just taking advantage of gonky's uh, fame. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My thirty thousand subscribers is just congratulations, just... gonky. By the way, <laughs> on the thirty thousand. It's a it's a it's a great partnership. Mover knows how to build an audience, and Gonky knows how to how to uh, enthrall everyone. How to take advantage of that, and then make me edit right. all the videos for his own channel. Exactly. No. Right. Uh-huh. I God make thumbnails. Did. Oh, look at me! <laughs> oh, I'm going in the woods for two weeks. Mover, you got it. <laughs> yeah, Gonky Wombat Mover Show. Uh, but no, I've really I've, I've really enjoyed it. You've had some great great uh, great uh, guests, and and also uh, you know great discussion. It's a good bro chat. And then uh, the mental health thing movers um, is really cool that you you're doing that because um, yeah I think that I hope that's helping some people. Yeah. Um, it's uh, it's good to, it's good to talk about it. and you know for me too it's good that that uh, you know in the two years um, I've been you know I've had some challenges with that. Uh, but really it's just more about just recognizing that that I've had challenges in the past too that I didn't address. And uh, yeah. and um, and it's good to it's it's good to. Uh, to get that stuff out and to talk about it. I've enjoyed hearing you guys about it. And then it's, it's also, you know, I had no qualms about coming back here and being in your program and, um, you know, fessing up to that, that, um, that, you know, might, might not have been as awesome as it appeared two years ago, you know? So, because I know you guys are not a non judgmental audience for that and, uh, and supportive dudes and, you know, movers reached yeah, out to me and hey, some text here and there, man, how you doing? And I appreciate that a lot. So yeah. Hell yeah. Good to be here. Gonky. Okay. Hi, thanks, man. Awesome. Just sitting there looking pretty gonky. That's all you ever do, man. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Douglas. I've got nothing more. Awesome. Good show. Thanks, Shanghai. Oh, one more oh. from the kids at home from Banks. God, thank you, Banks. Thanks, uh, Banks. Always Holy enjoy money. the live show. Pray for Israel. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. no matter what, what you think, the loss of innocent lives is yeah. terrible, terrible, especially in horrific ways like that. So we... we what is it? We pray, pray for peace, prepare for war. You know, that's, that's right. yep. just the way it is. All right. Well, we want to thank everybody for watching. Uh, we'll see you guys. He'll be back on Monday, right, Gonky? Next week? Yeah. <laughs> if Should the diva schedule allow it, we'll be back on the Monday. <laughs> yeah, I'll be back Monday. Yeah. No Don't forget issues. about, uh, it's a buck, one dollar. You can, you can buy Absolute Vengeance on ebook. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. All right, we'll see See you. Bye. All right. See you.